How's it hanging YouTube? Peter here, your Ginger Jody Geek. Welcome back to the channel for another Saturday Night Live. And as ever, I'm joined by my good friends. We've got James T. Keegan. How are you, James? Ew! Ew, indeed. Are you well? Excellent. It's a Saturday. We're vibing. It's good. James, th this time last week, James, we were embracing each other in Dublin, weren't we? Oh, so, don't remind me. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sad yeah. it's over. Bit the sad. first morning when I woke up and you weren't there, it was, it was upsetting. <laughs> you were going to whisper in his ear and he wasn't there, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the beds were far, far too close, Efren, honestly. Every Push time I woke up together. during the night, no. I could see his face just kind of drooling. And... <laughs> it was very strange. You looked like strange. you were a vampire in a coffin during the night. You, you were like this. <laughs> <laughs> like that it was adorable I have to say good stuff always nice to see you James always nice to see you and we have got my good pal Luke from Hydra Collectibles how are you Luke? I'm very good it was uh, I missed you guys last week you know it was quite sad seeing you lot having a great time but uh, you know you were missed and I'm glad that we're back yeah, nice to be back. Nice to be back. It was uh, it was a good fun weekend but yeah nice to be back mate we have got Highland G how are you? So I haven't seen you for a little while yeah, I'm good. Everything seems to be kind of back on track as far as YouTube and stuff is concerned. How are you, Pete? We never ask you. How are you going? I'm on? very well. Thank, thank you. How how pleasant, Highland G. Thank you for that. Why, you see, that's a nice response. I don't a, care. That's, that's why a I nice response. Ask. Before we went live, ladies and gents, James and Luke decided to have a pop at us about grammar and about, oh, you don't respond. respond tell us in the comments, time, right? Listen, ask, we'll ask the comments, right? If you put a full stop at the end of a text, does that mean someone's upset? If, uh, uh, would you put a full stop at the end if you're upset? <laughs> Let us know. Jesus. Highland G, thank you so much. It's nice to see you as well. Now, we have got my absolute favourite American um, and possibly human being. We've got Efren from Passpoint Comics. How are you, Efren? I'm okay. How are you guys doing? Very good, mate. Very good. Are you a, are you a grammar Nazi, Efren? Do you get upset if people put full stops in your, uh, your messages? No, but I... When... Sometimes I don't like the abbreviations, to be honest with you. I guess I'm just an old guy. It's something just, you know, besides LOL, I know what that means. You know, some other times they put abbreviations, you know. I'm just like, God, spell it out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> these young folk, Efren, these yeah. young folk. Anyway, chaps, it's lovely to see you all tonight. We've got loads to get through tonight. We've got some juicy news, actually. So looking forward to doing that. Before we do that, let's just quickly jump in to the chat and see who we've got. We have got Chris Bell. Always nice to see you. Good evening. Always a pleasure. We've got Von Hoot. Um, I hope you're feeling a little bit better, uh, Dr. Von Hoot. I know you've, you've hurt your back a little bit, so I hope you're well, bud. Um, I'm here. Some may be happier than others to see me. <laughs> hope you're well, Fuzzy. Um, good to see you. And we've got Jesper all the way from Sweden. Thank wow. you for joining. We've got Andrew Kai. Always good to see you, my friend. And we've got Chris. Even and Jens, the gang are back together. Indeed. Huge shout out to uh, to Chris. Chris um, ran a whatnot sale for us um, on behalf of the charity um, last week, I think it was. And he raised over £200 to go towards the charity. A little bit more news on that later on. But thank you, Chris. That was really, really appreciated. Um, Simon Silly Wave. Yeah, Simon Silly Wave. Yeah, nice to see you. Um, we've got Wayne. Nice to see you, Wayne. I hope you're well. Well, we've got Terry. Good dead man in the house. Terry's just picked up some, or he's in the process of getting some stunning artwork from a friend of the channel um, who's done some some brilliant covers work for him. We'll hopefully see that at some point. Terry will, will share that on the channel. Um, it means they've finished the sentence, James. Thank you, Chris. Thank oh, you. Yeah, what a great... Yeah. Lol cool was the sentence. Just so Lol you know. cool. Lol yeah, cool, like, full stop. Yeah. I was very yeah. upset. Yeah. Really yeah. upset. Yeah. Yeah. What the shit. Exactly. <laughs> James is officially bordering on tween angst. Just, for, just from a different generation, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess this isn't working out as you'd hoped, James. I mean, yeah. Uh, we've got Simon. Nice to see you, Simon. I hope you are well. We've got Andy Perpetual Comics. Missing you, Andy, as well, mate. Missing you from last weekend. What a lineup. See that full stop. Now, to be serious, right? If if it had just been what a lineup full stop, you would get the vibe that Andy was upset about something. I, think. I mean, I really wouldn't. James, I'm going to talk to you like I talked to my daughter. Suck it up. <laughs> Don't melt, snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> Shove those emotions back down. <laughs> Wait till he learns about exclamation marks. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh, and Andy's, Andy's offering to, to rub DVH's back. That's pleasant. That's very nice. Um, Simon's not even here there. I have a mare. 
I've had a mare. Oh, Simon's not on screen. No, no, but he's in the chat. He is in the chat. We've got Sean. Nice to see you, jo Sean. And Andy's just confirming he's permanently upset. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, full stop. It seems that you have punctuation sensitivity, James. That's a real thing. That's a real thing from what I've heard, yeah. Um, I'm saying nothing. Fun That's a perfect example, I think. Fun if stop. you look at that, you're like, yeah, Fuzz, something wrong with Fuzzy's upset. You know? Perfect example. James, I'm starting to think you've got issues, mate. Um, <coughs> and Chris, thanks for my comic at Dead Man. Um, I'm glad you're Peter's carer. <laughs> yeah, I sent the wrong comics to the wrong people. We sorted it. We got it sorted. Hey, anyway... You you know when you have that clip of Simon when he says something, you show that clip, you should make one for James now, you know. Kind of <laughs> yeah. James gets emotional. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> James show throwing a tweeny fit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good one. Yeah. Do that one. Um, okay, chaps, let's crack on because we've got <clears throat> loads and loads. <laughs> sorry. Dead man. Um, sorry. Von Hoot's concerned about you, James. Have you been hitting your head? Have you, are you, you know? What's that have to do with anything? It's because you, you, you're irrational, mate. You, you, you're mad. You, you're Just because I... I I'm in tune with my emotions, Peter. And I can <laughs> yeah. read them on other people. I know when someone's upset. I'm gathering James reads too much into text messages. Also, what the fuck is Peter doing using LOL at his age? How dare you? That's very How true. Dare you? Very true. Lowercase oh. too, by yeah. the way. So belly buttons and full stops. Ah. Yes. We're nice. learning a lot about you tonight, Mr. Keegan. We're learning a lot about you. Okay, guys, let's crack on. We've got lots of news to get through. Um, we're going to start off with the... No, not. The giveaway will be later on tonight. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, um, but we will be giving away some comic books later on. Now, I wanted to briefly touch on this. This this is probably my most watched clip of the Oscars. Did you guys see this? Have you all no. seen the, the Michael D? Highland G, have you seen this? No. So, basically, Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and Danny DeVito were on stage to present an award. And they kind of did a bit of a skit about uh, Batman being a prick and how he he, he beat them both up. And then they spotted Michael Keaton in in the uh, crowd, and they did this great bit where they kind of started shouting around and stuff. And Keaton's face was like that throughout the entire thing. And then he did the kind of the classic kind of come on at his thing, and it was just amazing. I I thought it was brilliant. I hadn't appreciated it at the time. I don't know if any of you guys picked it up, but apparently, apparently it's a, a purposeful thing that the, um, the 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 clothing he's wearing is a reference to Adam West's Batman. Because yeah. he wears a very, very similar setup in one of the episodes with the kind of the cravat and everything and mm. the jacket type and everything. Um, I just thought it was superb. But it reinforced something that we've talked about previously, which is uh, before I shuffle off this mortal coil, I, I need to see Michael Keaton as Batman from Batman Beyond. Um, I just think it's a, it's a must. So... Speaking about that, and then speaking in general about the Oscars, what were your thoughts about the Oscars? Was there anything that jumped out in particular? We'll start with you, James. Uh, I'm with <laughs> Ken. Performance was fantastic. I really just that was so much fun, and you can I love how um, Ryan Gosling's just on the verge of cracking throughout the entire thing. So that was that was really great. Nice. Uh, yeah, in terms of winners, I don't think there's any really major surprises. Um, Pretty much anyone who I thought should win did win, you know. It was nice to see Godzilla finally take home an Oscar yeah. and really deserve it for the budget. Like, that movie looks incredible. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just happy. And they just seem so excited to be there as well with their little Godzilla statues and, and stuff. Yeah. So it was, it was cool. Yeah, I liked um, some of them were wearing kind of Godzilla true shoes as well, weren't they? And yeah, they're like high heels themed. Heels. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was very cool. What about the rest of you? Was there anything in the Oscars that surprised you or that you, you thought was cool? Luke, anything? Um, well, I didn't watch the Oscars in its entirety, but oh, I've, no, seen various, yeah. I've seen various clips and stuff. I did think it was bang out of order, the comment made to Robert Downey Jr. about him being like the highlight of his, like the high yeah, part yeah. of his career or whatever. Yeah. Like that was... I, I heard vaguely about this. What, what actually happened? So obviously they're making a reference to his drug addiction from back in the day. But if, you're, if a man's going to win an Oscar and like that's his moment and he wants to be able to look back at that on like the television appearance and everything else, you don't fucking do what you did there. Like I think that yeah. was well out was of it order. Jimmy Kimmel said it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Apparently they're quite close in the, in the habit, but Luke's absolutely right. This is not the time to do stuff like that, you know? It's, I mean, it's your moment, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I would be absolutely devastated. You know, it was just, I, I thought that wasn't, that wasn't yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, he didn't slap him. I mean, that, that could have escalated. That's right. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah, I, I completely agree. I thought it was very strange at the time. Um, Luke, you're shocking people here. You did a swear. You did a swear. Oh, sorry. It's terrible. It's because it's not on his channel, Chris. He feels liberated <laughs> when he's over on my channel. Yeah. Um, 
Hide right. Sorry. I'll behave. No, you needn't. Um, Efren, <laughs> anything from the Oscars jump out at you? Um, I always watched the Oscar, Oscars since I was a little kid, and you know, I really enjoyed it. I mean, what James said, I love the Ken song. You know, I thought that was a highlight, and uh, the Batman. You know, with Michael Keaton. You know, him looking at Arnold and Danny. Um, just one thing. I just wish one of these days an Oscar wouldn't have to be so serious to be a winner. You know, yeah. or they should have separate, you know, categories, maybe for a comedy or something, you know, because a comedy is never going to be nominated. But I think all the voters are kind of stuffy and they just look for, you know, something serious. And I've seen Oppenheimer and I mentioned this on our when we did the show, I think it was on Monday with you guys. I just didn't get that movie at all, you know, and then I watched the Emma Stone movie recently. <laughs> Poor things. Oh, James yeah. has seen that. That's oh, fantastic. Oh, my I God. Think. This movie, you know, it was good. But it's so weird. It's yeah, so weird. Not, not yeah, hundred percent Oscars. Oh my god, she deserved it absolutely. I don't think so. I yeah. mean, you know, just gratuitous sex scenes again. I'm not. They take it off for effort. <laughs> you know, I was like, damn, it's really going full nudity in some of these scenes. I was like, yeah, oh my god, it's pretty hardcore. I, I, I actually think um, Mark Ruffalo in that movie is like, I would say his performance is better than Robert Downey Jr.'s. So like, but maybe. I would give it to Mark Ruffalo, but like June, yeah. you know, I mean, they Danny have, Swept, they have everything else. Oscars for anime, animated movie of the year. I think they should do one for comedy. Or yeah. To let, you know, do something. Best comedic like performance. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah. yeah. It is. It is. I mean, but I did enjoy it. So I'm going to come all down on the Oscars. Yeah. You know? yeah. I do. I do agree with you. Quite often with the Oscars, a lot of the films that, that achieve the, the big wins are films that are that person you wouldn't sit through and watch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. A lot of the time. Highland G, I know you, you don't watch a lot of movies at the cinema and things. Are you Oscars man? Did you watch any of it with interest? Not really. I mean, I've heard bits and pieces from, you know, you guys have talked on your kind of shows and I've seen maybe a few clips on, on sort of YouTube and stuff. I knew that Robbie Jenner Jr. got, got an award, but yeah. like, I, I feel he should have got an award for Iron Man. I mean, come on. Like, you know, yeah. so... There's like, a bit of snobbery there, isn't there? I think in terms oh, yeah. of yeah, the movies. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the wars don't really represent me, so it's not something I yeah. follow that much. And, and I think that's you know going back to James's point. I think that's why it was nice to see Godzilla represented a little bit because that is a that it, was a surprise, I mean, a especially based movie. on its budget. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually it's atrocious that like talk to me like deserved some you know best actress. I think that would have been she. She should have been up there and yeah, best cinematography and stuff like that. Just very rarely get featured. Very rarely, really. like The Exorcist and, and you slightly know, that kind of huge to, to do it. Slightly off topic from this year's Oscars, but an article was circulating this week that I read where they were listing the directors that had never won Oscars and like Alfred Hitchcock was on yeah, there, yeah. Stanley yeah. Kubrick, like all these people that are like so iconic for cinema. And yet yeah. they they never won Oscars. Like yeah. it just seems like the whole award is just a bit of a farce, really. If you ask yeah. me. Yeah. No, I agree, Luke. Just going to jump to the comments, guys, before we move on. Um, Fuzzy, not a fan of the of the Batman. Basically, well, he doesn't think it was nearly as interested as the sum. Um, I don't know as well if it was. What, do you think it was scripted? Do you think Michael Keaton knew that they were going to come to him and do? Yeah, because he purposely put the ascot on. Yeah, you think? Yeah. Like though no, they he said it. Oh right, okay. it's like from his it's like from his Batman like wardrobe, like mm -hmm. so it's an actual like Bruce Wayne. In Scott. the in the background movie that didn't come out, wasn't he supposed to play um an older Batman? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think the idea was he was gonna he was gonna be the one at the end of the Flash. Like yeah. it was he, he they swapped Ben Affleck for him, and then he was gonna be in that, and then they were gonna do Batman Beyond okay. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the Flash is on Sky Cinema at the moment. I almost thought should I watch it again just to just to justify my head. I'm gonna. I, and I, get it. I, I, I like that. I might, movie. I, I might make it. you watch it for. Um, I can view this all day. You don't have to make me, Peter. I'll watch it willingly. Yeah. Um, oh. Al Pacino. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Did you see the Al Pacino bit? That that, yeah, was, that was weird. Odd. He just looked a bit lost. Bless him. Um, let's see what else we got. Kimmel is crap. Yeah. No swearing was rule number. Th <laughs> what was the looks channel? Um, <laughs> Efren doesn't do boobs or horror. Got yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're learning a lot about people tonight. Stunt men deserve an Oscar. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, stunt men deserve Oscars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very true. Um, minus one should have really won best film. It's a very good. Film. I've not seen the black and white. Sorry, the um, yeah, it was the, the re-release it in black and white. Didn't yep. It? Yeah, I've not been. Sorry, it, it came and went. I think I don't think it came out here. But I'm sure I read that there was extra scenes in it, or different scenes in it. Yeah, they swapped out like, some sequences. Yeah, 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 I would like to have seen that. Same. Say it, Luke. Fucking travesty. 
<laughs> Don't encourage him. He's got a potty mouth when he starts. Luke, I'm going to ask you to talk briefly about these next. What's this um, all about then? Well, yeah, these were missing from our toy show, weren't they? We were yeah. a little bit, little bit ahead of the times. Um, so Street Sharks from Mattel. Like we've been after the fans, should I say, have been after these for quite a long time, and we always knew that something could possibly be coming from Mattel regarding Street Sharks. And uh, basically, yeah, these are the articulated versions of the Street Shark figures from when we were kids. So they pretty much look exactly the same, albeit that they've got you know knee joints, arm joints, etc. So this is the first wave that we're getting with the three characters, and hopefully we're going to get more. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, um, this is much, the, much like what they've done with the Master of the Universe Origins line, where they just put joints into pre-existing molds and figures okay. um so hopefully we're going to get more of this sort of stuff moving forward so i'm i'm not familiar at all with street sharks i've never read the comics never watched the cartoon what's going on with the green one with the is it a shell or something on his nose end what's that all uh about? it's a drill so he's he's like a swordfish oh right okay um okay. yeah okay um, a, lot of, a lot of fish stuff <laughs> a lot of fishy based yeah um any of you guys familiar with these First time I've no. seen them. Yeah, I'm not. Highland G, these Street Sharks, something that, that have hit your kind of it, radar? It's something that I've kind of watched passively, I guess, when I was growing up. Because, I mean, around the time of, like, you know, sort of between Turtles and Power Rangers, there was so many shows that were, like, you know, like Mike and Mice from Mars, Street Sharks, all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I, I watched all of them at one point, but I wouldn't say I was, like, a, a fan that would pick yeah. up a toy. I don't even remember the cartoon being a thing. I'm obviously too old to... So it's, it's basically in in the nineties we had a lot of shows like this with you know humanoid animal creatures uh, much in the vein of turtles seeing that success and so other people wanted to create yeah. their own thing we had street sharks biker, biker mice from Mars etc yeah. um, and I actually remember I watched a documentary about the, the the creation of street sharks and they wanted an action figure that could literally hold a turtle's figure in its mouth ah, okay you know to kind of show that it was that's that's what created that weird shape you know yeah. to the toy. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, Chris is asking there any places in the UK getting them? I don't know, Chris. Luke? Props and replicas currently have them for pre-order. Um, I personally, I'm not getting them. In fact, I'm selling my current Street Sharks that I already have. Um, but props and replicas have them for pre-order. But we have been told that they are not a exclusive to anywhere, so they okay. should be in retail. So you'll probably find them in Smith's Toys and other places later in the year. Very cool. I'm um, just going to jump into the chat, guys. Just before we do that, we've got 24 people watching, which is fantastic. Thank you so much for supporting my little channel. Please do hit the like and subscribe button on myself and everybody on screens. One Good Scare, Hydra Collectibles, Highland G, and Passpoint Comics. Um, Andy, I can't be the only person who thinks these look absolute poop. No, mate, you're not alone because I think they look like cack. But it's just because it's not my thing. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure if you're a Street Sharks fan, these, these are jumping out at you. But for me... Yeah, I'll I'll pass on these. I think um, that's for the toy review show, Luke. But I've pre-ordered. Okay, Simon's keeping one point. Apologies, Simon. Apologies. We will reserve any more sweet chalk chat for the to, the toy show. Um, Fuzzy, I just aged out when they arrived. I think yeah, me too, Fuzzy. Me too, bud. Um, I know of them, but didn't even realise they didn't have articulation. They were just solid chunks, weren't they? Really, so from... you could move like their arms, and that was it. And then obviously, like they had the action feature of if you pulled the fin on the back of the head, the jaw opened and closed. Ah, okay. okay. Um, but other than that, yeah, they were they were pretty much static. Uh, and is that all these ones have as well? No, these ones have like full on fully updated. Okay, okay, so okay. They are they are fully updated. Sure. The, chat, the chat aren't impressed the chat aren't impressed half price by christmas is fuzzy um chris who remembers attack of the killer i remember it had a banging theme tune from what i remember is it a attack of the killer tomato i seem to remember watching the trailer the start for that but not really don't you laugh at me keegan don't you laugh at me uh, we've got werewolf nice to see you hope you are well my friend okay next bit of news we had another little scene from the X-Men cartoon. I don't know if you guys saw this. This was the X-Men taken out of Sentinel. Oh, I did um, see this. Yeah. yeah, very cool. I have to yeah. say, the animation style and everything, for me, really works. And we've got this coming out um, next week, I believe. Is it? Is it next week? I think it comes out the uh, 20th. 20th or 22nd. Yeah, 22nd yeah. is it when, it's Wednesday or yeah. Friday, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I'm quite excited for this. I know we've, I'm not going to get delve into it because I know we've talked about it on many occasions. Um, but... That was interesting. I enjoyed the, the clip. 
But then we've got this. James, I don't know if you want to talk about this. This is a bit a bit surprising just a few days before the show is going to air. Literally, like, th- three days, I think, before the premiere, um, this guy was... Sky- so this guy had worked on a few things. He'd done Moon Knight. Um, he, was, he had done a script for Blade. He did season one of this. He's already written season two. Was in talks for season three. And Marvel just fired him. Uh, all of his like Marvel associated social media and everything gone. Um, employees told you're just not going to see him again. So we don't know why yet. Um, there are rumors. Obviously, something bad has happened here. You know, this is some kind of a almost like a cover up. It feels like of like a HR have you, issue or something. Have you guys heard the rumors? I've, I've heard, heard rumors. one involving an OnlyFans thing, yeah. but that was that was from bef- he had that before. So he, this guy is, is a. a he had an OnlyFans like before he worked with Marvel, so I can't imagine that's why. Are you not allowed an OnlyFans? Because I mean, I'll have to. Well, that's the thing. Them. I think in this day and age, you can't really do that. Uh, you know, I feel like like that's you know, and he that was he was probably open about that prior to joining them. So I don't think it's that. I think like he's been accused of something probably, or um, they've had some you know complaints against him, something like that. Interesting. I would imagine. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it's a shame, isn't it? Just before the thing comes out, obviously we'll, we'll um... <laughs> fuzzy. That's good. I think yeah, he got his tally whack out on the net. Okay, okay. Again, I wasn't aware that was something you have to do. I'll have to, I'll have to delete those. That's, old that's the non-swearing way of saying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, silly people in Hollywood, man, aren't they? These big name producers and actors and things like that who seem to get themselves in the shit just when they're kind of on the peak of of hopefully going places with the careers and things. Um, what a world we live in. Can't do Marvel if you've had your knob out on the internet. <laughs> well, there goes my feature. <laughs> I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't think, I can't imagine that's why. Like, Mar- like Mar- Marvel probably knew. So, you know, there's something nefarious, I feel like, here. I think Chris is quite right. I mean, back in the good old days, you could get your knob out wherever you wanted. You could still be on Corrie or EastEnders, anything. Now everyone's got a camera. (laughs) Everyone's got a camera these days. And, oh, dear me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, moving on from this, unless anyone's got anything else you want to add on this. Anyone? Nope. Okay. Efren, did you know about that? This? I heard heard about it, yeah. Yeah, okay. You know, and I wasn't going to talk about it, so I don't want get into very sticky sensible, yeah, sensible. Yeah. Um, Highland G I'm going to come to you about this I don't know if you've seen this news but I'm interested in your thoughts because I know you're a Teen Titans fan it's been confirmed now that the person who's writing the um, the Supergirl movie is going to be writing um, a Teen Titans movie now we don't know anything else about it we don't know which iteration of the Titans it's going to be <clears throat> or we know it's going to be a big budget live action Titans movie this something that excites you and is this is, what team would you uh, would you like to see what iteration would you like so are, are we talking like the writer the, the comic is no, based no, the on for Supergirl or like no, so the, just a, a movie writer yeah. not knowing who the writer is I yeah. don't know if that's a good or a bad thing um, ha- having the Teen Titans in a movie would be cool to see. If, if, if I was to have that, I'd probably want more kind of like what you've got on screen, more kind yeah. of an early, um, more kind of light-hearted take on the, the Teen Titans. You know, if you think like, you know, you like your, your more kind of camp Batman type stuff, like I think that would be the era of Teen Titans that you'd want to kind of do just as yeah. a bit of fun. Like you can update the costumes a bit and have them less, you know, childish, but you can still have that camp feel. I think the Titans TV show was a little bit too dark to have like kids and stuff watching. I think you're absolutely right. And I think I'm, I'm kind of reminded at the moment, I can't remember, Efren, there was a line of books that you got us reading. Is it World's Finest? Yes. They've, they've done a version of that with the Titans. I don't know if yes. anybody's reading that. Reading but that's it. really good. That's kind of, that's that iteration of the Titans, the older school version, not dark and gritty, more fun, you know? So yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm, I agree with you. I'd be really interested in that. Um, what about the rest of you? Any of you guys Titans fans? Anybody interested in seeing them? I'd really like it to pull from the like the animated series. Um, that, that kind of tone. I'd, I'd like to see Deathstroke because the villain. I think as well. That'd be that'd be cool to see. Maybe Red X or something like that. Um, but like judging from like assuming that this takes place at this around the same time as like a Brave and the Bold, like. That has Damian Wayne, so you're going yeah, to see yeah. like Nightwing and and Jason Todd probably, and, and those kind of characters. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited to see what they do with it. Yeah, I think Fuzzy's right. Some of the Titan characters, 
<clears throat> for me are, are kind of you know sacrosanct nightwing is one of my favorite characters but i think you get this you, you set this early in the days when he was robin and he was kind of on loan from batman as it were to the titans not fully the team leader kind of element yet nightwing is further down the line really yeah that's what they said it said it earlier if they wanted to like well i think for me that they've, they've made a point of saying it's a teen titans show not a titans show and that's two different okay, properties to me i think yeah yeah Luke, are you familiar with the Titans? Is it something you? No, you it's want? not. I've never seen anything to do with them or read any of the books. Just watch the cartoon, man! It's fantastic. I even love Teen Titans Go, like the silly kind of yeah. kitty version. Mm. It's good. And how about you, Efren? Uh yeah, I mean, I, I like Titans. You know, I like them. The Teen Titans when they uh, fought against the X Men or met up with them and uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and all yeah. Them, you know. So it they should have a little bit of comedy because they're teens. You know, so yeah, yeah I, I'm looking forward to this. You know, I think they should include Cyborg. Hopefully, they will. I know he was in the uh, Justice League, you know, but this is you know like a reboot yeah. again. So he he's been part of the Teen Titans for a while. You know, good stuff. Dead Man's just confirmed the world's finest Titans was a mini series. It's finished now. Yeah, I remember enjoying it, mate. I remember enjoying a few issues that I read. James, going to come to you next for this one. I feel we've talked about this a lot, but I, I saw some news to say it's coming back. This is yes. that, that game. What's it called again? This is from the gaming, the toy show, yeah, Peter. God. Yeah, um, yeah, so this is uh, Multiverses. So this Multiverses. Was, we, talk, we talked about this a while ago. Yeah. I'd, I'd been playing it just before it shut down. So it was uh, in beta, but it had been up for in beta for like a year. There was microtransactions. People had paid money in it and stuff. So people were a bit pissy that it, they were putting it down. But it had lost quite a lot of players at that point. So I think like that was kind of the only option to give it a second life was to take it away for a bit. So there was um, like a, a re-reveal video. They've upgraded the engine, um, better net code. So like, you know, it, it'll, be, it'll perform a bit better. Finding other players should be easier. Um, the only thing that I found strange from the re-reveal was that uh, they didn't show off any new characters or stages, which I, I think you should have thrown out a couple of heavy hitters here with the yeah. review, review, like put out a Harry Potter or Neo from the Matrix or something like that, you know, to get people excited. But I'm sure we'll get like, you know, every couple of weeks a new kind of look at it until it comes out there was kind of a couple of teases there was dexter's laboratory was a stage and powerpuff girls so those are going to be coming to it um but i think it's it's may kind of 15th or something like that i think is, is when it's coming yeah. back i'm excited i, I want to see i want to see this do well i enjoyed you this played game. this hadn't you on the, the last version literally right it. like i when they announced it was shutting down i said right i'll give this a go before it goes away <clears> for a while and yeah I, I had a lot of fun with it i played it quite a lot and enjoyed it so um I'm not gonna pay any money in it, but like yeah, it's free, you know. So just yeah. give it a go. Like it's it's a cool one. Um, fuzzy fuzzy's after you here, man. James gaming section. Same when you're up. Full stop. There you go. Um, <laughs> and if only you were more articulate, James. That that cut deep, fuzz. That hurts. And can I just say a huge thank you to Wealth by lunchtime? Um, thank you so much, cheap socks. I'll be getting cheap socks. Um, thank you so much, mate. That is very much appreciated. Mm. Thank you. And um, that will go towards the the next charity um, night. Well, no, actually, I'll be able to add that to to the current one, hopefully. So yeah. thank you very much for that. Um, any of you guys played this or excited? No. Titan J, are you a gamer? I can't remember if you're a gamer or not. Yeah, I must have played on Nintendo nowadays. I, I used to have a lot more stuff on a, a kind of gaming PC, and I created a whole bunch of Steam stuff. But you get to the point where you have so many games, you're not actually playing them. So I, yeah. I kind of cut back and focused on like one or two games at a time. So... Yeah, mostly Nintendo stuff. I spent a lot it's of time in the you, latest Zelda. Do you know, it's funny you're saying that because I got very excited at Christmas and got myself a PlayStation 5. Is that right, mm -hmm. James? Yeah. Yep. And bought a ton of games on it. I don't think I've played any you've of them. Played anything, yeah, yeah. I've played Turtles, and it's the kind of the scrolling adventure from the 70s or whatever. So I've not really played much on it at all. I think the good thing about you get overwhelmed. Yeah, the good thing about Multiverse is it's an easy, you got to spare 20 minutes, play a game or two kind of game you know it's cool but I, I think if warner brothers want this to survive you put out heavy hitters you know give yeah. us mad max and ben 10 and uh scooby-doo and and all the yeah. lord of the rings no lord of the rings characters mm -hmm. you know no harry potter characters so like get them in there i think this will be well yeah. i was playing a uh, mario kart yesterday you know nice and easy and fun yeah yeah. yeah, that's the kind of game I like, Efren. You can yeah. just sit down and just have a bit of yeah. a laugh with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 27 people watching. Thank you so much, everybody. Please do hit that like and subscribe on everybody's channels. Efren, I'm going to come to you next for, for your take on, on this little bit of news. Um, 
Peacemaker. So Peacemaker is the show that we had not so long ago uh, by James Gunn. Really, really strong show. James Gunn came out, I think it was last week, the week before, and said that Peacemaker wasn't going to be canon in the new DC universe. And then I don't know if you've seen the new thing, but now he's yeah. gone back on that and said... It kind of sort of happens. Yeah, no, he said season <laughs> one's not canon, but season two is canon. Yeah, that was always the statement. So, so what do you think about that, Efren? What do you think of that? Um... I I just think his announcement was unnecessary. I mean, I mean, I love season one, and and at the end of season one, if I recall, some of the Justice Leaguers came out, mm -hmm. uh, the older ones, so to speak. Now, you know, so yeah. I mean, I don't think it, the first season had so much into it that it would have to not be canon. You know, yeah. I don't think it had too much reference to his version of the DC universe now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what season two is going to be about. Then is it going to be like if it, if season two is going to be canon? Um, is it just going to take off from season one? Is it going to just be completely new? I don't know. I don't know if they're just going so to ignore the, season two, season one completely. No. So the statement, the statement he's updated this now. So it's um, most of it happened. So I think what he's saying is, yeah, which is so fucking messy. Like that's so messy to start your universe off like this. Um, but I think what he's basically saying is like it, a, a version of this happened aside from every reference to the the yeah. snyder the original dceu stuff but like you it's weird because you take another leap back and there's the suicide squad movie where there's like all hardy quinn and shit and we're gonna probably get a new hardy quinn and new versions of a lot of those characters yeah. so like it, this is it's i, I hate this should just clean sweep man this, that's what I they should have gone just get I'm rid kind of kind of kind of with chris yeah it was brilliant either way and i love that first season but i think for me and I go, i'm interested in what, in what you guys think with the Marvel Universe, no matter how much criticism we give the Marvel Universe now, because it, it has gone downhill, I think there's no denying that, but no matter how much criticism we give it, those early days, it felt like there was a plan, it felt like there was a cohesive structure built around the narrative, you know? The DC Universe just seems all over the place. It feels like nobody really knows what the longer term game or plan is and what's canon, what's not canon. We had all this shite about whose characters were continuing, whose weren't continuing and stuff like that. I'm going to, James, I can see you on the edge of your seat, but I'm going to give Luke a chance to speak first. Um, Luke, what do you think? Um, that's because, and that's a full stop at the end of that. So I've always liked that you don't have to worry about where it all fits in with the DC stuff. Like, I'm more than happy just watching something, enjoying it for what it is, and if I see a character, it's just another version or another story of that character. I don't care who the cast member is. Um, you know, the amount of Batman films that we've watched, for goodness sake. Like, it's they're all Batman in my eyes. It's just we have particular favourites. I don't, I don't need everything to be canon or non-canon. I just want to have a good time and be entertained. Yeah, that's a fair point, fair point. Highland G, I would imagine you're of a similar thought. Yeah, I was going to say pretty much the, the same thing. I don't give a toss about canon. Um, at this point, I, I enjoy stories that I enjoy. And actually, I kind of like a self-contained story, both in comics and in shows, where I can watch the one thing and enjoy it and not be obligated to watch the thing before or after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do enjoy standalone stuff as well, but I do like the interconnecting universe too. It's nice to have things that maybe like draw on things or reference things a little bit and, and, and things like that. So if they have a cameo or something, fair enough. But having the cameo doesn't make it tied to the other thing, in my opinion. It's it's just a cameo. Yeah. Yeah. Efren, how about you? Um, really quick side note. Did you guys see John Cena at the Oscars his when he came yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. damn dude, you took a lot of guts doing that. I was like, yeah. whoa. That was crazy. Yeah. Couldn't oh. take my eyes off him. It was amazing. Yeah, I couldn't. I imagine if that was a female actress, it would wouldn't happen, would it? No, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So I think yeah, but um, I'm looking forward to it. You know, season two. You know, I think it was a great. Yeah. It was one of the best. You know, shows of last year or whenever it came out two years yeah. ago. You know, so it was I all campy it. and fun, but in a good way. Yeah, you know, they did yeah. it right. You know. Yeah, so. absolutely. James, any fucking, I fucking can't remember now. What I was gonna say. Um. <laughs> so you were, you had said about like it felt like there was a plan with Marvel and that's what we're not gonna that was the entire point of bringing Gunn in to start with Superman Legacy so the, I, I this just feels very self indulgent yeah. you know I think you should have just like you know what I, I'm losing Peacemaker but okay for the good of the universe yeah. for the good of the brand 
to keep going. Or even do what like Marvel were going to do with Daredevil and like the Peacemaker colon something, you know, and it's, oh, it's a fresh one and where characters are in it and the same actors, but it's not yeah. necessarily, you know, I, would I have think, felt a bit cleaner. I think part of it for me, and I'm going to come to Andrew's comment in a second, is is much, every time he opens his mouth, it gets a bit more complicated. So if it's going to be standalone characters that don't interconnect, I'm fine with that. Like Luke in, in Hydra have said, sorry, in Highland have said, I like standalone movies. But you just need to stop talking about it now. Do you know what I mean? You kind of just need to get over it, I guess. Just let us see it. <laughs> you know, yeah. like at the stage, yeah. Because yeah. Andrew's saying, you know, there was an easy way and a hard way to go about this. James Gunn chose the worst way to handle it. Sure, you can understand what he means, but he is unnecessarily making it difficult for himself. I agree. I agree. Chris? It's almost too easy for like people to speak to the audience nowadays to the point that they just overspeak. Do you know he can't not reply on on yeah. threads or whatever he uses that thing. That's Twitter bang on. Thing. That's bang on Highland G because he's mm. he's he's dangerous on Twitter. Do you know what I mean? He, yeah. Like James says, he literally responds to everything. Can't not reply. And Jim. then every time he responds, he gets. I'm sure he gets kind of a phone call from some exec saying, oh, "He needs like might. a publicist or something to yeah. just stop him." Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Madam, uh, Madam Webb, Chris saw Madam Webb yesterday. Oof. And now accept the ranting. It was piss poor. Fair play, James. Absolutely. We do this for you, Chris. We do it, yeah. <laughs> do it. Um, can we get a full stop button for next week? <laughs> Love it, yeah. We could do different buzzers like they do on Last Leg. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Um, DC thought they found their own Feige. It's not started well. I agree. I agree. And I, I do I'm, think I, a lot of it ties into what Highland G was saying. I think he just needs to shut up now and just let us see a film. And also, I think he's not untouchable. Like, does Aslav could cut him at any second? You know, that's what they did yeah. with Snyder. So, like, yeah. it's. I think if the first three movies that come out don't, one of them doesn't make a billion, he's out. Yeah. You know. So, um, this is a good point. Planet of the Apes releases me unlikely to be to disappoint. Absolutely, the trailers look amazing. We've spoken about that that a lot. Um, Luke, I know you don't get to the cinema much. Cinema much? Are you getting to the cinema for this one? I'm going twice. Yeah, good, because we'll do a review show. We'll, we'll definitely do a review show on this one, because I'm excited for that. I think it's going to be amazing. Um, excuse me. Just want to briefly mention this, chaps. Amazon have picked up um, One Billion Genies. They're going to do a, a show about that. I've got the trade paperback, but I haven't read it yet. I hear it started well, but fizzled out a little bit. Any of you guys read it? I, so, I, I read the majority, but then, like people said, it fizzles out. But I haven't read those bits that fizzled out. So where I stopped was really enjoyable yeah but i just never i never actually continued it for, for whatever reason it wasn't on my pool list um so i just never received it yeah well, how, did you say you've read it Efren? i read it and i agree basically you know what luke said at the beginning it was fantastic you know i started reading it but then it started fizzling out at the end yeah. you know yeah. more became like another comic book with just a bunch of people fighting each other you yeah. know I mean, I mean, it's, I enjoyed it, you know, so. it's an interesting premise, isn't it? It's a, yeah. you know about about everybody getting the kind of the um, a wish, as it were. Yeah. I'm quite looking forward to this because it's a, a comic-y property that's not tied to the kind of the big two, not superhero-y, I guess. So it'll be an interesting show to watch, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Fuzzy saying it had great potential, but it, it fell away. Yeah, I hear that a lot, Fuzzy. I hear that a lot. Um, James was drinking that bottle like a hamster. <laughs> I missed that, James. I'll have to go back and. Sorry, I was. I was what, we, we, I'm just. I'm having some refreshments. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose one of the good things is that a lot of these adaptions don't strictly follow the comics, so yeah, yeah, the concept yeah. might be good enough, and then the show will exceed. Yeah. yeah, that's the hope. That perhaps to change a little. James, I'll come to you first on this one. Batman Two delayed. What do you think about that? Is that sucks? At all? Yeah, I'm really upset. I, I was really excited for this, and that that's such a. When was the first one? Was it wasn't even last year? Was it the year oh, before? No, it was a couple of couple of years ago now. Quite yeah, 2022. So that's mm. I mean, it's that's too long to wait between four years, five years between yeah. movies. Kind of shit is <laughs> annoying. So, um, yeah, I'm good about this to be honest. Like, because I, I think it was nice. We had Penguin later in the year, and then this early next year and now it's yeah. it's, uh, it's a shame. I, I always find it and I'll be interested in what you guys think I always in my head I think if the delay in it so they can get a decent script written and it, it improves the overall film yeah. fair enough but from what I've read about this that's not the point here the point is that they didn't pay or something for the original script or there was some issue it was a financial issue that resulted uh, in the delay well, Jeffrey Wright had said like because they were due to start filming yeah. like quite soon in the next few weeks uh, Jeffrey Wright said I've not even seen a script yet so like I don't know if the script was even 
I haven't heard any news about a script, but like that wasn't very telling. So I think mm-hmm. it was this was writing on the wall already. But yeah, it's a, it's a shame. Yeah. What about the rest of you? Does it bother any of you? Or are you just happy to wait? I don't care. Yeah. I I don't care mostly. It's very because... fucking harsh, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't care mostly because I wasn't really a fan of the first one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't say I was blown away by the first one. I've tried to watch it again since, and it's yeah, I don't think it's the best Batman. It's movie. too long. It's the best. It's the best Batman movie. Well, it's I really, Batman movie. I really <laughs> enjoyed the first one. It's one of the few movies I went to see in in the cinema recently, and it wasn't because of specific actors or specific portrayals. It was because it reminded me so much of the Arkham games. There were certain sequences that just screamed the Arkham games for me, yeah. and I love that tone. I love that feel. Um, so. Would I like to see the movie earlier or quicker? Sure, but I wasn't aware of the release date anyway, so pushing it back doesn't bother me. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Okie dokie. Going to briefly touch on what we've been reading recently. I've got a few comics to talk about. Interesting to know if you guys have been reading anything. Um, Spectacular Spider-Men, issue number one. This is um, a team-up book with Miles and Peter. First issue was just out last week, I think it was. Uh, Let one know in the chat if you've read any of these. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the banter. I'm not a big fan of that art style. What do you call him? Is it Hugo Ramos? Ramos? I can't remember what he's called. Um, but I, I, the art was okay for me. But yeah, I really enjoyed the banter back and forth in this. Um, it was pretty cool. Any of you guys read that one? No. I haven't read them yet, but they're on my list. Yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. Oh, dear Lord in heaven. Ultimate X-Men number one. I know Efren. I don't mean to upset you because I know you're a big fan of Peach Momoko. This is Peach's take on the X-Men. It's got some really pretty artwork in it if you like that kind of Japanese kind of style and things. Um, but this isn't an X-Men book for me. This 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 just didn't out for us at all. Um, I really didn't enjoy it, sadly. Uh, so yeah, I, I won't be reading on with, with that one, I'm afraid. Um, and then What If Aliens? This was brilliant. This was um, this was written by the actor. Uh, a little bit slow at the end, but the original setup, the start of it, and everything was really cool. I think this has got a, uh, the promise of a good little series about it. So yeah, I enjoyed that one. That was good fun. Um, other books, Transformers. Latest issue of Transformers was just absolutely friggin' phenomenal. Um, Daniel Warren Johnson writing and on the artwork. It's his last issue doing the artwork. But this was brilliant. Daniel Warren Johnson, I don't know if you guys have read much of his work, but he, he's his sound effects, he kind of writes stuff in the panels, as you can see on that image there. And this bit, if you've not been reading it, was kind of Prime's redemption. He gets power back to take on the Decepticons. And that little panel in the middle there with, you know, the song, absolutely. Do it. As soon as I read that, you get the Transformers, the movie, you've got the touch kind of music playing in your head. Just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's a superb little series. I love it. Um, Highland G. Highland G. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I don't like Power Rangers. I've never liked Power Rangers. I think the cartoon's cack. Sorry, the, the show is cack. But I'm loving this book. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it, which is bizarre. Have you read any of The Return yet? I haven't yet. No, it's, it's one of the series that I, I have. I'll probably pick it up and trade when it's... It's yeah, all kind of done it's, together. I think it's written by one of the original Rangers or one of the Rangers. Um, but it's kind of set in the future. This issue, issue number two, shows you a little bit of the background into what happened to, to kind of cro- cause them to quit being Rangers. Um, mm. But I'm loving it. I never thought yeah, I, I think, would enjoy a Power Rangers comic. I think the idea was when they wanted to do the, the kind of commemoration episode, there was a few people that either didn't want to take part or didn't want to put the spandex back on again basically and she was one of them so it's the pink ranger it's the the, the original actress who, who played the pink ranger who's who's writing this and basically what she's done is she's wrote her version of what that episode would be as a kind yeah. of short series but she has the ability to include all the original characters and anything yeah. she wants because they can draw it they don't have to get the actors in yeah. So she's got kind of free reign. So it's quite an exciting idea. Yeah. You know, it's been, do you know what? Like I said, I can't see any more than as a non Power Rangers fan, this has got us really enjoying the book. Um, so I think that, that's big props to her for, for, for hooking me in, as it were. It's really good. Um, sadly, I can't say the same for Thundercats. Issue number one was okay. I was quite critical of the, the art. Um, issue two, 
actually I'm just not getting it at all I'm not getting any excitement from it it just feels flat to us um I will read on because it's Thundercats uh, but but it's certainly not in the same kind of um level as Transformers or GI Joe or Power Rangers for, for me it's it's the weaker of all of the nostalgia books at the moment any of you guys read any of those books I've been reading Transformers. I've liked it so far. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I wasn't going to read Power Rangers, but since you recommended, I'm going to give it a try. It's worth reading, Efren. Just, just. I mean, if you're a non-Power Rangers fan like me, I think you know is a big positive. I don't know the background and the law and all that kind of stuff, but I don't yeah. feel that that's impacting at all. I'm, I'm enjoying the story for what it is. You know, Luke. How about you? You read any of these? So I read the Alien What If, which I thought was really good. Um, very interesting to see if we get more of that yeah. even after this series um the power rangers return didn't even know that was a thing but yeah. again based on what you've said about it i'm very interested to go and give that a give that a try um i am a power rangers fan but only yeah. the original series like mighty Morphin power rangers um so if this is something related to that then i'm all in yeah i got i got in a way i got last ronan kind of vibes from it do you know what i mean set in the future kind of that stuff so yeah worth reading just going to quickly jump to the comments guys um <laughs> fuzzy ultimate x-men pure men's dog shit I, yeah yeah i'm, afraid I'm so. loving all the full stops in fuzzies uh, yeah comments. me too I, it is noted fuzzy don't think we're not saying it mate it is noted um well by lunchtime when <laughs> since when did the pillars of rome tell me how many batman movies there were ah uh, yeah yeah it's um it's part of the the font now i'm afraid fuzzy Really enjoyed Aliens What If, surprisingly so. I did as well, Fuzzy. I felt it kind of dragged near the end of the book a little bit, but still the narrative was there to keep us interested. Uh, it's written by the actor as well, isn't it, from my understanding? Yeah. It's the guy And I think it's done also. Yeah. yeah, very cool, very cool. That's interesting, isn't it? Because then when you think the Power Rangers one is written by the actress as well, so yeah. it's happening quite a lot. But, 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 I mean, this is a topic for another time, Luke, because I think it's an interesting one. I think it shows when you've got people who are connected in some way to the franchise or the character of maybe he's got a bit of love and a bit of passion they're not mm. just drafted onto the next book yeah. do you know what i mean so they obviously have a it's the same at the moment with marvel isn't it with the the young lady i forget her name james will tell us the young lady who's writing miss marvel Man Villani. yeah you can yeah. feel her passion for the character in the book yeah. you know whereas I, if it's oh you're now just taking on spider-man because that's the next book for you to write it, you lose that love, I suppose. Yeah. I, I think as well as that for like an actor to go and like they have to have a really good pitch, I think. Oh, if, yeah. For, yeah. You know, so that's probably an element of it as well. And I'm sure they're supported heavily, I would imagine. Do you know what I mean? But but still, I think it, it's good. Um, <laughs> Andy, Ultimate X-Men hurt my eyes, my feelings and my soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know the song. This is Andy. Andy's upset because, um, I don't know if you guys know, but I won the Killer Comic Show vote on Thursday night, and Andy really didn't want my cover to win. Um, so yeah, yeah. Andy, just in all honesty, I did message James, Luke, and um, Efren and ask them to jump on the show and vote for us. So I don't, you know, yeah, no, just I voted, so you know, I voted three times. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So on who you know the song absolutely made. I think that's the telling of a good comic as well. And I, I do this with Transformers, and I've done it with a few other comics. When I'm reading it, I hear the voices in my head of of the characters from the cartoons. You know, and as soon as I read that, you know the song, it just hit into my head. Chris Tiger's stash wasn't e wasn't even enough to save Thundercats this time. I'm out. Biggest disappointment of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. It's, it's just not doing it for us, I'm, I'm afraid to say. Amy Jo Johnson, the original Pink Ranger, is writing the book. Superb. Um, Thundercats, it doesn't do it for me, sadly. I don't remember them talking like they do in the comic. It's quite, uh, it isn't quite working. It feels odd. I completely agree, Fuzzy. The dialogue, I mean, last issue, the art upset us. This issue, the dialogue just felt weird. It just doesn't, yeah, it's just not, not Did weird. Did you vent so, that to the, uh, Oh, get stuffed. <laughs> get stuffed. To, to I right made a faux pas, <laughs> gentlemen. I made a faux pas. I'm going to show the comic in a bit. I went to um, Dublin Comic Con last weekend and spoke to the artist of Thundercats and tried to get him to do as a sketch cover, and he refused, and I was very upset. Um, so I've, I've moaned about it ever since, that the artist wouldn't write on my, my nice cover. He just signed it. Um, and then when I was on the Killer Comic Show on Thursday... 
the point is, you do realise that wasn't the artist you're talking to. You've got completely the wrong person. That's the writer, not the artist. So I didn't know that, did I? So so that, I think this is my flub. This is my fault. Because when they announced him, it said, Art, a comic book artist who has worked on, and it said Thundercats. So I messaged you, Peter, and yeah. said, hey, the artist from Thundercats is going. And you just didn't double check it. So it, I, I feel so like that's so my fault. It is your fault. It yeah. Your fault. <laughs> that's so, why I'm so angry with you, James, and putting full stops on Thundercats. Why don't you, okay, get, why don't you get James to do a sketch? James, 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 James. Yeah. No, yeah, no, he, no, he can take responsibility and draw no, you a he's, nice. He's not drawn as a Thundercat. No, nah. no. <laughs> Thundercats too dropped the ball. I'm out. Yeah, biggest disappointment of Thundercats was the fact Peter thought. Yeah, we've we've just gone over that, Andy. We've just gone over that. Hashtag proper fan. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> oh, Kenneth thinks that's the year. Uh, Kenneth, that's that's not the um, that's not the <laughs> giveaway, mate. Nice it, try, it but it's not be. the giveaway. <laughs> it, it should it should be it should be. <laughs> <laughs> people, people are helping Ken out. Um, Aliens isn't actually wrote by the actor and it's soon. All oh, right, he had the idea. There's two. Re- oh, I didn't realise that fuzzy. Didn't realise that. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to catch up with the comments before we can move on. I read Savage sort of corner magazine sized books. Enjoyed the read, but the printing was so dark. I haven't. Is that a new one out? I haven't seen that. Not seen that one, mate. But I do like the old Conan books. Michael Dawn. That's, um, is that not Worf? Michael Dorn? From Star Trek? Hmm. Star Trek actor who played what? Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Sorry, I'm babbling now because I'm trying to keep up with the chat. Okay, very cool. Um, yeah. Shower of cheating bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We all had a senior moment. Right, we're up to speed. We're up to speed. Okie dokie, guys. What we've been buying. Before we do that, just to quickly do the giveaway. So, um... So the giveaway, Kenneth, this is your, your moment. So the giveaway is hashtag bubblegum. So please put in hashtag bubblegum and um, bubblegum ice cream. Mm. Well, are we going to explain um, this this reference or not? <laughs> this is James having a fight with a bubblegum ice cream vendor in Dublin. Dublin. Um, so yeah, please stick hashtag bubblegum in the chat and we will um, we will pick some it sounded comments. like It sounded like he was asking... Double checking was Andy, like asking for bubblegum. Me and Andy were, were, <laughs> were buying ice creams and James was stood outside and the vendor said very pleasantly, large or small or something like that. And James went bubblegum. No, copper cone. He said copper cone. Cup, cup, said, cup, said, uh, yeah, and I said bubblegum. Cup or cone. And he goes copper said, cone. Bubblegum. I said, yeah, bubblegum. Bubblegum and uh, whatever the other said, flavor no, cup, was. Cup, cup or cone. Cup, cup or cone. cone. I was like, oh, sorry. Bubblegum. Uh, bubblegum. Cup. cup so yes. me and Andy had to shout at him, no, James, cup or bloody cone, man. What's the he looked, he looked yeah. so angry as well. <laughs> I thought he was going to hit you. It was great. Um, so, yeah, hashtag bubblegum, please, ladies and gents. Stick that in the chat. Okie dokie. Quickly show off some of the things I've been picking up. I've showed these off on Killer Comic Show, but I'm going to show them again because I'll probably not be doing a video about them. So just make myself big potentially oh i can't remember which button to press there we are so a few action figures i don't really um <laughs> i don't really collect this scale but these were five euros a figure <coughs> so that's what four quid or something like that so i had to buy these these are the marvel legends they did come boxed but i tore open the boxes and um, so i didn't have to bring them home from from dublin but that is obviously hercules we've got speedball I love that figure. That's a really nice detailed one. I like that one. I might have to try and get the rest of the new warriors to go with him. Well, Quasar, one of my favourite characters. The Quantum Bands. We've got Havoc. Again, another nice figure. He's got lots of clip-on kind of bits, which I don't like, so I'll not be using them. I got this from a vintage comic shop, toy shop. Um, sadly, when I've got it home and had a look at it, it's not an original. I thought it was an original, but it's not. It's one of the 2020 remakes. Are you going to phone them and eye. tell tell them? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I think that's a really interesting point because you have to keep an eye out for that because this was in amongst a load of vintage figures. So I think, you know, these re-releases of these older figures are great, but for people who want the originals, you need to be on the ball, and I wasn't on the ball on this occasion. Clearly says 2020. On his um on his boot there, so yeah, keep keep an eye on that, and um, but yeah, great figure. I'm going to keep him anyway, obviously, and still hunt for the other one. Um, this is a stunning Thundercats number one, signed by the writer. <laughs> what can I do with that? Oh, okay. I mean, what am I going what am I going to do with that? Dog shit. Um, yeah. I also bought his book, Old Dog. Now, interestingly, 
he did do a remark in that, which is pretty good. So he could have, so, he could have, if anything, that's more of a reason to do a remark yeah, for you because no yeah. one else is going to ask for one. Do you know? Yeah, like, absolutely. I would have done it. Absolutely. Yeah. A couple of Incredible Hulks. First appearance of the uh, the new version of Ghost Rider, and stunning little Avengers Twilight book number one. Really like that book. So yeah, so that's my pickups. Um, any of you guys got anything you want to show off? No, this time. Yeah. I picked yeah. up just a couple of things from Dublin Comic Con, so I got, um, yeah, I met the actors from Grand Theft Auto Five, so I got the yeah, three of them to sign now with some quotes and stuff, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I got, let's get them out now. Uh, I'm trying, I'm looking for the name of the artist because she's really good. Um, somewhere here, can't remember name. Uh, it's written on the thing. Uh, Nico is her name, but anyway, she's a she was an artist that was at Dublin. I think an independent artist at Dublin Comic Con. She had this Ellie sketch, very cool. I love that, that was stunning. So I was like, yeah, I have to pick up that. It's like twenty quid or something like that. So I was like, yeah, have that. Got uh, a Nathan Drake print as well. I thought that was really yeah, nice. 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 So that was at the Comic Con. Uh, I was in Forbidden Planet with Peter, and I got the Fog uh, blank cover. So I think I thought Bubble, I'll get like a pirate from the Fog on it. You should have asked um, cool. Declan to, to write his name on the cover. He would have done that for you, the artist from Thundercats. Why would I do? Why would I bring a? Well, a why blank? would I do it? Why would I bring a blank? Names, why would I bring you? a blank cover to the writer of a book, Peter? I mean, God. Um, <laughs> so I got that, and then I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but I got Helldivers too because everybody's shining on about it. Oh, that's cool. um, it's it's really annoying because it's sealed, but the disc is loose, and I'm like. <sighs> That's frustrating, so I have to check it now and see. That's the physical Little things wind you up, don't they? Little it things. could be damaged, Peter. It could be fucking damaged in transit. Well, open it. Loose. Open it and check. I'll open it live and see if it's still in one piece. Open it live. Like, that'll be cool. Open it live and we'll see if the disc's shattered. I hope it's the Does right that, disc. Yeah, exactly. Does that mean... Is that, that a thing? Does that happen? Yeah. Does that actually happen? People put the wrong disc in the wrong disc yeah. and things. Oh, I feel a video coming on and looks. I got it from. I, I got it from you know what? I've already, I've already written it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. so it's, it's, a, it's a video about why you should open up your your physical yeah. media. Luke, if this is a smashed DVD video, whatever it is, you can use this footage if you want. Physical media is dead. Yeah. <laughs> I might use this footage anyway. Just yeah. So. <laughs> um, I've never it, seen it, smashed it, in the box, but I've seen scratched up. If it's like loose in there. I, I mean, I, fuzzy's pretty, fuzzy's pretty fuzzy's pristine. quite right here. You know. Could be damaged as he waves it around. You know, I don't know. I don't know you can see why. Right. I've seen um, DVD box sets that have come with two of the same disc. Yeah, so, like you get two two yeah. disc number ones inside the box set. Okay. That gives Andy's a look at the inside if you want to see. And he's confirming that James is a very angry individual. Yeah, yeah. But interesting thing with discs is actually you don't want the top to get scratched because the media is right under the top. So you actually want to place the disc silver side down on any surfaces, even if you have to clean it. Because if the top gets scratched through, that's your actual media right under the image. Right, so I didn't know that. Okay, interesting stuff. Right, okay, <laughs> okay, guys. Anything else anyone wants? Ke Kenneth, we've got your uh, entry now, bud. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else got anything they want to show off today? I've got something that I bought. I showed it on my Instagram mm -hmm. recently, but I'll show it here. And this is a Power Ranger. So, oh, I've just knocked his hand off. Here we go. So this is the the Black Ranger with this is the, from three zero. the drag the dragon shield, yeah, from three zero. Yeah, so it goes the same cool. size as my my Lord Draken one. Yeah. But I basically want any of the ones that are referenced in that Kyle Higgins comic book run. So I want this one, um, any of the other ones with the dragon shields and stuff, so I can create a, a little bit of a display. Yeah. But I've been holding off to get them at a, a decent price. So I picked this up on eBay for about eighty quid shipped. Which that's, is pretty good. That's brilliant. Yeah, and the, the the solid figures, those three zero ones as well, they are very nice. I like them. I like them. Yeah, they can be a little bit awkward when you put the weight on like their wrists and stuff, but as long as you get it in the right place, then it kind of holds. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, disc chat tonight wasn't expected. <laughs> um, Fuzzy, did you pay a vintage price for Winston? I think I paid 20 euros fuzzy so yeah more than we should have really very cool Highland Jane. I like 25 that. new wouldn't it have been 25 bucks um you can get a vintage a vintage one for about 10 quid on eBay I think not pattern. with all the accessories mind I think I don't know yeah. I haven't looked into it to be honest okay. um hashtag bubblegum I don't know why I'm saying that but it seems <laughs> to be in fashion good man Chris I hope you are well um What's your favourite bubblegum? We have one named Big League Chew here in the States. Super. Hubba Bubba, baby. That, that's <laughs> the, strip, the strip one. Do you know the one you pull? I love that yeah. shit. 
I used to like, well, I'll tell you a story. First of all, I got some chewing gum for the aeroplane over to Dublin so my ears wouldn't pop and popped it in my mouth. I was sat next to two young ladies and nearly vomited immediately because it was that airways waves stuff and it literally cleared my sinus, sinuses Intense. and blew my head. It was, hur I was crying. I think they thought I was afraid of flying because I was sobbing and, but yeah, but no, I used to like back in the day, I don't know if you guys remember it, um, but you used to get like a, a tube and it was like a, a luminous pink gum that you squeezed out like a toothpaste almost. It was vile. Or oh, rubble bubble. That was nice. Highland G, favourite toothpaste. Uh, tooth, not toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cold gauge kind cold of guy, gauge. to be honest. Cold <laughs> cold <laughs> cold <laughs> favourite flavour of chewing gum. Efren's looking confused, so we'll give him a few minutes to work out what chewing gum is. I don't know if it's the same thing in the States. I, don't chewing gum. I, you know, I you used know to always gum? have, have <clears throat> Wrigley's double, double Mint, the green one. Okay. Spearmint, yeah. yeah. Double mint, yeah. not the spearmint, the double mint. Oh, the, the double mint. Okay. Well, Luke? What do we call that spearmint? Peppermint, so, we call it. I like the spearmint the, um... was the stronger one. That Hang was on, we've got pure and walls going on. Yes, fuck. I As usual, it's James it's can't let it lie. James it's can't let it lie. James can't let it lie. He needs to be right. Cultural so... differences, okay? <laughs> right. it, where, where Highland Jane's from? It's like a tartan colour, isn't it? So it's, it's right. fine. <laughs> yeah. Luke, what about you? No, but I liked it because it was less intense because you were talking about the airwaves. Like, there was two, two, two. One of them was more intense and I had the one that was less intense. Yeah. Nice. Luke? So uh, I think this is the one that James was referring to, the hubba bubba, where it's like curled around yeah. like a roll. But I like taking a big bite just out of the oh, roll. Fuck, and I'm, really, I'm, I'm the, really upsetting talking people. Talking my language, skinny. Luke. That's exactly what I do as well. Yeah, <laughs> just go. Um... You people are insane. Honestly, I bit a kit. I, I had a I had a two finger Kit Kat, and I said to my wife, "Do you want half each?" And I bit it in half. Like gave her two. Yeah, that's pure evil. That I think. <laughs> Who bites into a Kit Kat? <laughs> Efren. <laughs> I'm excited um, to hear what gum you chew, Efren. Um, I used to like Spearmint and Double Mint too back in the day, but I also like, I, I'm drawing a blank on the name. It was uh, first a lollipop and then it turns into a gum at the end. Um, like a hubba, not hubba, hubba, I know what you mean. Chup, is it a chup uh, lolly? Chup, a chup, chup, chup. No, they call it something different here in the United States. But I, I like uh, bah, this is annoying me because it's like, a, it's in movies and stuff. It's a famous thing. Yeah, there was um, a specific lolly that like inside yeah. its bubble gum. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like just, um, Big Lee Chew, I've had that too. You know, I used to collect baseball cards in the 60s and 70s, and he oh, used to come with a pack yeah. of bubble gum. That was the hardest plasticky yeah. bubble gum ever, but I used to eat all, I used to chew it all the time, you know. Our, our trading cards and stickers used to come with that kind of a, yeah. it was like a, like a blow pop. Yeah, it was just right. awful, like dried yeah. chew gum. S um. Side note, I miss chocolate cigarettes. Do you remember chocolate cigarettes? These are bubblegum cigarettes here in the United States, you know. Well, it was like Not, chocolate with the rice paper on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to love them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I can't Very even good. find candy cigarettes anywhere anymore. Don't like, make it anymore, I don't think. Don't want to encourage. I, I, I remember like I used to. It's cool. Okay, let's um, <laughs> let's, let's, let's put a full stop. We should on we that should chat. do a show. We should do a we've show got, about like sweets when we were younger. Guys, don't exist listen, anymore. we've got thirty two people watching us talk about frigging. The numbers going. Cigarettes. The numbers going up as we're talking about yeah, it, man. We're talking about the algorithm. algorithm. Let's yeah. let's <laughs> bin let's bin the comics talk and just talk about chewing gum, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, you guys. Used to, used to get sweets attached to your comic books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of the, the um, yeah, all the UK ones because it's hard because you know I'm a collect. I like to collect the comics with the free gifts on, and it's really hard to get some of the ones that had the original sweets on. Um, I was what, looking comic at book a, with candy. Yeah, they used to sell a tape it to the front cover, Efren, so you get chewy I've, bars. I've got and a things lot of old beanos and dandies and stuff. Was it like quite hard to a regular store comic book or any type of comic book? Taped. It's yeah. it's making yeah. sense of pence, Efren. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Chris has like the question of the night now. Efren, do they have screwballs oh, in the I US? Love a, I love a screwball. Mm. They have a drink called. Mm. No, no, so, 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 a, so a screwball is sort of like a like an ice cream sundae kind of thing, and it's got at the bottom just like a little a ball, like a bubblegum ball. You don't have that? Not that I, I've never had it, so no. Yeah, but it never lives. They may have it here, but I just never had it. You know? It's yeah. just it's just basically an ice cream with bubble gum at the bottom, Efren. But it's yeah. it's nice because yeah. the ice the bubble gum's frozen probably yeah. by the time you get to it, so it's like really chewy. Jesus Christ! <laughs> right, guys, listen, we've got last last few seconds. Hashtag bubble gum, um, and then I'm going to draw this um, thing. So let us just share my screen. We've got 30 people watching, but um, only. 18 people entered into the competition so please do hit hashtag bubblegum um <laughs> chris is saying being working class mean pe 
Pete just ate real cigarettes. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Just chewed on a few of them. Um, Nick Abaka Glory. Nice. Nice. Kenneth, hashtag bubblegum. Good man. Good man. Um, right. Okay. Let's, let's draw this and pick some comics, okay? So, good luck, everybody. And we are off. See who wins tonight. Please be Kenneth. Bless him. Let's see who we've got. And congratulations to Casio Kid Simon. Okay, Casio Kid Simon. That's I've not our Simon. I've name. never seen this name ever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who Casio Kid Simon is. Casio Kid Simon, to be entered in the giveaway, you need to be a subscriber to everybody on Screed's channels. So please make sure you do that. And then drop us a, um, a message via um, Instagram. And we're going to double check to make sure you're subscribed to everybody's channel. Yeah, absolutely. Because if this absolutely. is comic, if this is comic lads, Simon, a uh, double enter in bad form, man. It's not. It's it not be out, Simon. Yeah. So, Casio kids, Simon, congratulations. We'll pick you some comics. Usual guys, um, you will get one of these. We can play blade and some cards. You just need to uh, drop us a line on Instagram, as I've said. And let's see what comics you're going to get. So, Highland G, tell us when to stop. Stop. Front or back? Uh, back. Look. Stop. Front or back? Front. Ooh, boobies. Um, Efren? Stop. Front or back? Um, back three spaces. Back three spaces. And James? No, he does his every... No, I, this is the first time I've done this, actually. Don't believe you. Don't believe no. you. Stop. Front or back? Full stop. Front. Full <laughs> stop of shit. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> I wish, wish I thought of that. We've got one more. Oh, I haven't asked anybody ever. No. Um, Highland G, you tell me when to stop. Stop. Front or back? The front. Different. Okie dokie. So, um, ca was it Casio? Casio Kid? Casio Kid Simon. Casio Kid Simon. Casio Kid Simon, you I'm have won. Um, Weeping Blade, some trading cards. Ooh, nice. Limited edition Cobra Commander issue number one. Um, this is a variant cover. so that's That literally just went in, didn't it? Didn't that just go into the box? Yeah, I think so. Uh, not so long ago. Last video. You've won. Boobies. Oh, You've nice got one. Vengeance and Vampirella. That's a nice cover. I like that one. She's a healthy young lady. Um, more number one. This is an interesting book. I don't know if any of you guys have read this, but that's a quite an interesting one by Boom Studios. Um, oh, another Vampirella. Nice. Nice. Um, and this one, which is X of Swords number one, I believe. But it's got a T on the back, so it means you get a, tr a trade paperback as well. Uh, I don't know if he's still in the chat. I haven't seen him in the chat. Any of you guys seen him in the chat? Nope. 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 So I'll pick your trade paperback. You can have Hotel. So by John Lee's. Nice horror book. Oh. So drop us a line on Instagram. Um, and we'll get those sent off to you as soon as possible. Okie dokie. Good evening, Phil. Nice to see you, my friend. Um... Right, let's get back to that, and we'll talk a little bit about what we've been watching lately. Um, okie dokie, June, June number two. No spoilers, because I know people won't have seen it, potentially, well, I'm saying that, it's a bloody ancient book in it, so people should hopefully know the story. But no, I, I, I disagree with this whole <coughs> this whole thing, because like, The Last of Us 2 has been out for five years, but I could I wouldn't go telling you what yeah. happens in it, because this show, you know, so I think... Yeah, we'll keep, we'll yeah, keep spoilers, no spoilers. so... Um, I've been to see this. I know James has been to see it. Anybody else seen it yet? Not yet. No. I thought it was all right. It didn't. It didn't blow me away as much as I think it blew James away. Um, it's very long, very long. People say it's like the new Dark Knight. Um, I didn't that get that vibe from Night it. Close to Dark Knight. Yeah, but it's canny. It was some interesting bits in it. Some stunning performances. Some amazing, amazing um, set pieces and special effects. Um, but overall, June's never been a story that's particularly enthralled me, I have to be honest. But it was all right. I would go and see a third one. Um, James, how about you? I think it's an excellent movie. Um, it, like When you're sitting watching it, 
you feel it does feel like elevated from a lot of the kind of blockbuster movies we've been getting lately in terms of like the sound design and the oomph of like fight sequences and stuff like that um but I, I I don't know what it is. I think it was it was just so hyped. I've been hearing such amazing things. Ten out of ten. This is a masterpiece. This is the best movie of the last twenty years. This is the Dark Knight again. Um, I just don't feel like that's the case. It is very much more of that first movie. And, I, and now the first movie I came out of the cinema and I was like that was pretty good. And then I rewatched it the day before seeing yeah. this, and I was like, no, it's amazing. It's a brilliant movie. So I feel like maybe that might be the case with this. In once I get a bit of distance, I'll feel that way. Um, but I, I don't know. It is. It's a bit. It's a bit long. I feel like I thought Austin Butler was incredible, and in I love his character, but he's, I don't think he's in it enough. Um, I think it sticks. There's like various different plot, like storylines happening, and it's so long between seeing some of them. So like the Harkonnens for me are like the most interesting part of Dune. It's like nearly an hour until you see them for the first time, and then it's like away for forty minutes, and then back for one scene, and then away for you know. So it's like a bit. The pacing to me was a little bit off. Yeah. Um, but there's some incredible sequences, like the sandworm sequence is amazing. Um, I think the final battle, it, it very much does feel like Lord of the Rings. It's epic, you know. I think the two movies together are a masterpiece, you know. So like, yeah, it's it's if you just go in with set expectations, like don't go in going this is going to be the best thing ever, you know. Just go and enjoy it, and I'm, you might be blown away, you know. But yeah. you just said it was a masterpiece. Now you're saying you shouldn't. Go get into it too much, you know. Make up your mind. No, I didn't. Is it good or is it bad? I mean, just... No, I said. That, I feel like Efren, you just you just skimmed what I said, basically. No, I I, I agree I, with Efren. I think Efren's yeah. right. The two <laughs> movies together, I think, are, are as one as one thing articulate. incredible. Yeah, Simon, oh, Simon, 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 Simon will see it and he'll yeah. deliver a better. Simon, yes, Simon's art seen it. It's great. There you go. That's all you need. Sorry. All yeah. Um, yeah. No, no. I I I agree, James. I, I think. No, I don't agree. I don't think it's a masterpiece. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's all right. It. It just doesn't excite me. I. I do disagree with you about the end. Fight mind. I, I, it had some nice bits, but for me, oh, God, how hard to do without spoilers. It was a bit silly. It was a bit silly at how easily things turned around by the end. Well, it's sort of an. Uh, it's an oh fuck topic. kind of thing. It's like oh shit, they went there, they did that, and I. I really think it's an amazing character study. You know, if you look at it from that way, I think like Paul Atreides is a brilliant character, yeah. and I like the journey that character goes on. It's just such an amazing world and universe is to be, be in. Part three, yeah, it's got. So it's this is the first book, part one and part two, and then Doom Messiah is the third book. Is the second book, so they're going to do that. The difficulty is the third book's well regarded as not being particularly good. It's um, it's not a good end to the series. Well, like already where this leaves ish, like particularly with like Zendaya's character, it's like ooh, you can't really do what you do with that character yeah. in the next book. So uh, yeah. I'm curious where they go with that. And, and but it's 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 a cool, yeah. it's very good. Yeah. You know. Now this this I did like this is Invincible. Um, this is the the next half of the season. Hit um yesterday part part two of season two, the first episode of it. Um really enjoyed this great battle at the end an epic battle at the end i think the mid-season breaks killed this a little bit but because i didn't even realize it was out until thomas my son said oh In invincible's out i'd heard nothing really about it um i hate this mid-season break thing they seem to be doing because it just it does you lose the the memento but if you're not watching invincible i would recommend you check it out it is a slow watch at times because it's very character driven and, and like the book it's quite um, involved with the, the dialogue more than just things being hit. But when things do get hit, it's phenomenal. And this this latest episode, the latter half of it is brown, which is brilliant. Any of you guys get a chance to see this yet? No, I didn't even I, know this was out, so I'm going to go watch it after this. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Look, I think no. this mid-season break thing, just it just it hampers it. You know, you lose all momentum for the series. Didn't they say that there's they're going to... They're like ahead now, so they can, like, season two will be or season three will be quicker and, hopefully yeah yeah, hopefully. yeah yeah but there was no reason for this break is what i understand i was reading a, um, a, a article on it saying that the episodes are ready it's just for whatever reason amazon insisted on having a mid-season break which is ridiculous to me yeah but yeah frustrating because they've you, abandoned them one issue of adam eve as well yeah so that's like right and again there was no thing. fanfare about that was it that just kind of appeared just kind of know? dropped yeah yeah um yeah yeah um 
Comic Art Simon saying, read it first. Yeah, I love the book, mate. I love the book. It's it's stunning. Yeah, I, mean, I, I enjoy seeing them animated, but the book is still the better of the two oh, stories, absolutely. in my opinion. Absolutely. I totally agree. Amazon are poor at advertising their shows, I find. Yeah, I agree, Fuzzy. Um, absolutely, absolutely agree. But yeah, well worth checking out. If you're an Invincible fan, well worth watching. Like I say, the, the battle at the end of this episode is very cool, and it's straight from the comics as well, which I loved. Um, just to give people a bit of advanced notice, the next film we'll be watching on Icon View this whole day is Batman 66 movie. So if you want to have watched it recently before we release the video, please do go check that out. Um, and also over on One Good Scare, we'll be doing um, Omen. So I'm going to hopefully watch that tonight yeah. or tomorrow. So again, if you want to be up, up to speed by the time we release the video, go and watch those movies now. Um, Luke, I've not heard of this. This is something you want to oh, this Oh, this is great. Yeah, this is amazing. So I've just finished season two just before we came on air. Uh, there's three seasons in total, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if it actually got an ending. Season three aired in 2021 uh, and there doesn't seem to be any more. So I'm hoping that there is an ending to it. Um, but this is a great show. And I actually stumbled across it through Instagram, of all things. Same, just a clip, a clip of the show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, the annoying thing about Instagram is people asking, well, what show is this or what film is this? And people giving the wrong answers on purpose. And it's an absolute nightmare to try and work out. Yeah, but once you yeah. worked it out and I found out it was on Disney Plus and I actually went and checked it out. But I'm now in a race against time because of my Disney Plus uh, subscription is actually ending this week. Um, and so I've got to finish season three before before leaving. So what's it so, actually um, about? So he's a he's a hitman. He's a gunman for hire. Um, and it's a, a, an Australian drama, I guess, like crime drama, but it's really good. Like I can't stress enough how good it is. And the, the episodes are like 28 to 30 minutes long. They, they're quite short. Um, and it does go to some dark places, but those darker episodes are some of the better episodes. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't really want to give out anything else yeah, away yeah. because it's, it is such a short thing as well. Like there's only like 10 or 12 episodes per season. Um, but I do highly recommend it. It's been very enjoyable. A great I'll character as out. well. Like this is, guy is his name. He's phenomenal actor. Like I think really incredible. And yeah, yeah. yeah it's Did a, you say I this was recommend. on Disney Plus? It's on Disney Plus. Yeah. Okay, I'll check this out. This looks very cool. Very cool. Um, I asked you to watch a few trailers before tonight. We've had the trailer for the the Crow. Now I have to admit, guys, I'm not a massive Crow fan. I've seen the movie, the original movie, and I think I saw the sequel, um, and I'm aware of the character and enjoyed those movies, but I don't have any kind of huge allegiance to it. That said, it's, it's quite stark, the difference in the designs, I guess, for this new movie. Um, what did you think of the trailer? I'll start with you, Highland G. What did you think of the trailer? Um, so, similarly, I haven't got a big kind of connection with The Crow. I've seen the first film years ago um and you know it is what it is i know there's a kind of a cult following around it i was quite surprised when i saw what the character looks like in you know his sort of full sort of revealed self if you like mm -hmm. compared to what the original movie was but the sequences and things actually seemed to fit quite well they all yeah. kind of tied in with the way that actor was acting they, they still tied it to being, you know, he's not doing it through hate, he's doing it as a revenge through love type thing. And I actually quite liked There's a few sequences where like he was getting like shot up and stuff and the guy's yeah. like, oh, I killed you. And he's like, yes, yes, you did. And I was like, I was like, okay, something's going to go down. So from an action movie perspective, it just looks fun. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It looks interesting. Luke, what about you? Yeah, so I'm a I'm a fan of the Crow concept, and I I enjoy the original movie as well as the second one. Actually, um, after that, it definitely lost its way. Um, I was very skeptical at first, and even when this trailer first came out, I was like, "Oh, do we really need a remake of the Crow?" Uh, but again, I watched it specifically for this show um, for us to talk about, and yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. The only thing that I will say though is I feel like, as always, we were shown way too much in the trailer. You know, I feel I feel like we already kind of know the story if you've ever seen The Crow before or read the read the books before. Um, but this trailer really did give a lot away. But I do love that it's been like upped. You know, it's yeah. not just a remake. It is going places that the other one just couldn't because things are better now, you know, better, better effects, better CGI, etc. Yeah, yeah it's, it was much more graphic than I think I was expecting. I have to be honest. Efren, how about you, bud? 
Oh, I agree with what you just said. It was a lot more graphic. Um, I remember seeing the original when it first came out, but even comic books, I've never read much about the crow. And I know the premise of this character. Um, there was this one scene, though, in a preview, I went, whoa, um, when the guy's head is blown off. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Damn, yeah. that looks so real. I was like, Jesus, yeah. man. You know, so I almost put it on pause so I can take a closer look, but I didn't, you know. <laughs> but I, I'm looking forward to seeing this. I'm glad you uh, recommended it. That's just as a clip to watch, you know, because I, yeah. you know, I think the actor played um, the the clown in it. Pretty sure, you know, so. Yep. Yeah, it is. Those guys right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And he's a fantastic actor, man. I, I, I can't think of anything I've seen him in that I've not enjoyed because he's also mm-hmm. in um, John, John Wick, Wick, isn't he? He's amazing in John Wick. I thought I loved yeah. him. Yeah. James, you a fan of this? Yes, I, I've actually never seen the original movie. Um, right, okay. So, uh, you know, this has been in development for a very long time, various actors come in and out. Like, I remember Brandon, um, the Brad, uh, Bradley Cooper was it for uh, Jason. Yeah. I kind of imagined that they were going to just do the exact same look again. So I'm surprised that they took a, a different round. Wasn't really a fan of the tattoos. It's very kind of Leto Joker-y. Yeah. Um, but I think in the movie, it, it, it does work. Like, he's, you know, he's a kind of a, a thug. You know, that's how he starts off. So, um I like the tone of it. I like how brutal it is. And I think Efren kind of hit the nail on the head. It feels very real, the violence in it. And I think that, that you know, that that's really impactful. I think it's going to have some really cool action sequences in it as well. Um, yeah, and I, I just really like the the look of it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see. I think for me it was jarring because in my head, I've not read a lot of, well, I don't think I've even read the original series, to be honest. I don't think there's a massive amount of cruel comic books out there. I think there's like the original series and a few follow-ons. So I'm not, I'm not in, ver- in kind of in depth into this character, but I expect in my head, I think of the crow as kind of a gothic kind of character. You know, that that's the style of it. So this felt out of kilter. This felt more punk. Fuzzy's saying in the comments that that's how he's represented in one of the other comics. So maybe it's just a later version. So that said, I thought it looked fun. I thought the graphic violence of it looked great. Um, I'm not sure I agree, Look, that they gave too much away. I think they, they, they give you this... They give you the origin, don't they? The kind of the, the purpose of the crew. But I'm hoping there's more to it than that. It's going to be a revenge movie, isn't it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I, I think this will be interesting. It'll be interesting to see um, how how violent they go. Because they've shown I think a lot they already in the with it. Well, as like the premise, because for me that allows them to to have different people essentially take that mantle. Like it doesn't have to be a reimagining of the character who was the original Crow. I don't know if that is what they're doing or not, but in theory, the the whole thing is that just someone died and their mm-hmm. mind is not at peace, and they have they have yeah. to stay around. And that could happen every hundred years, every two hundred yeah. years. So you could have different people. And I think that. that's what that's what. Sorry, James. I think that's what Fuzzy's alluding to. He's obviously read a more recent version of the character, and there's a female crow. This version of the crows, they've toned down the yeah. tattoos from. So the, so in my mind, I'm thinking the original. This yeah. is probably the more dated well, version. I was going to ask: Is is it directly referenced that he's the same character from the other Crow movies, or could this be I'm like sure. a follow-on? I don't, like I don't think a... so. I think no? It, well, I then, think yeah, that, like that'd be really cool if it was a, a sequel, really, to yeah. it. That'd be, I'd yeah. love to see that, yeah. Now, 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 gents. I'm going to just, straight off the belt, this looked like pure dog shit to me. I, I thought this was I, dreadful. I, I, you said that earlier. I, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Wait, what's what's wrong with it? Do you like this? This, this yeah, it looks interesting. It's, well, it's Chris. God. This is a pool pool guy. Yeah, pool man. Pool, pool man. man. Um, so I, I love when you see kind of long time actors take a crack at writing and directing, and it's worked out really well for some of them. Like Joe Scott and Lavish didn't ama- had an amazing debut. Um, so I'm I'm really excited for this. I, I think it looks very like Big Lebowski esque. I feel. Uh, really good cast as well. Like Diane DeVito, I love seeing in anything. So yeah, I'm, I I think this looks. Good. It wasn't. It just wasn't funny. It didn't. I got Big Lebowski kind of vibes from it. I think that's what they were aiming for. But <sighs> Efren, did this excite you? Uh, sorry, not at all. I mean, if this movie comes out, I'll wait for it to come out on TV. And even then, I may not even watch it. You know. Yeah. So, but I mean, I love the. They're really good actors in this movie, though. I mean, we have Annette mm-hmm. Benning, Danny DeVito, and Chris Pine. Or right. Is that his actor name? Chris Pine, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a great cast. So, you know, and, but it didn't grab my boat, you know, so I'll probably wait for it to come out on TV. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, 
yeah, I'm on the same effort. I'm trying to think of a reason why I would be excited about this, but it's just not doing it for me. Sorry, distracted by a message there. We've got um, Casio Kid Simon. Nice to see you, mate. Drop us a line on Instagram and we'll get these comics to you. Also got Charlie Adler to draw me this version of The Crow, which he did covers for. Oh, I didn't realise he did the covers for it. Okay, that's interesting. He apologised saying it's the worst thing he's drawn. <laughs> great, great. Luke, what about you? Are you excited by Pool Man Guy thing? So I'll be honest with you, I don't remember anything about the trailer. Like, I did watch it, um, but I don't remember what I actually saw, what what actually happened in the trailer. But I do, I am with James. You know, I remember watching it and thinking this this is intriguing. Like like you say, I can't think of anything funny. I can't like I know they had a voiceover with him at a typewriter and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I've I've that I've <clears throat> I enjoyed the trailer. I enjoyed all the trailers that we watched this week. Yeah. Um, I don't see. I, I'm. I, yeah, I'm intrigued to see it, but I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch the trailer yeah. again to try and pinpoint what you and Efren are saying because I thought it was okay. Yeah. Highland G, what about you? So for me, it started off okay. Like the very start of the trailer was, oh, we're gonna spoil something. Oh, look, I'm the writer. I'm gonna tell this story. Like that got me kind of intrigued to begin with. Um, I'm not a big fan of the. The actor, I don't know what his name is, but I'm not Chris a big Payne. fan of the main actor overall. So it's not that didn't like draw me kind of kind of straight in. Um, He's a pri- o- private investigator, right? That's what overall. I'm trying I to remember know. what I, I was watching. I, to be honest, I, I, I felt as the trailer went on, I w- I less and less retained any information from from the trailer, and it was really just sort of <laughs> low hanging jokes, you know. Yeah. So so I think there's going to be an audience for it. People who want that, you know, simple fun dumb movie which is fine i mean you don't need everything to be overly complicated but it's Absolutely. maybe just not for me fuzzy saying chris pine is underrated i have to say i've not seen hella high water oh it's have to phenomenal say, it's man you have to watch it yeah it's incredible. i, it's, I it's do like chris pine movie. i liked him i liked him in star trek unsurprisingly but i also really liked him in dungeons and dragons i thought he was really he's really great in that yeah yeah i think he's good in wonder woman as well steve trevor yeah 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 i forgot yeah, he was in that yeah, yeah i'm yeah. trying to, i try to forget the second movie yeah um yeah. right now now arcadian Nicolas Cage, monsters, kind of, I don't know, I, I just love Ireland. it. Ireland. This I, is filmed yeah. uh, down the road from me. I don't believe you, James. You told me Ireland was fields and grass and potatoes, and when I went, it was just Newcastle. on a I, li- I live where the field and grass and potatoes are. are I saw no Nick Cage. Didn't say, I only saw one glimpse of true Irish people, that, that group with a stick shouting or making noises. Oh, right, right the yeah, yeah, the country folk, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The most yeah. Irish people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah. But this, listen, this trailer, it, it just ticked all of my boxes. I thought this was great. It's going to be, you know, it, it, form a lake, I guess, monsters attacking the house kind of thing. But it's Nicolas Cage. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, it, it's everything I want. I'll, I'll watch this, definitely. Highland G, we'll start with you this time. So I'm not a big horror guy. So to me, it felt very generic, like every other horror film. It is, yeah. So... I mean, it seemed fun. It seemed well done. Um, I'm impressed by the sheer amount of movies Nick Cage has done in the last few years. Um, but other than that, it's, again, not really for me. It doesn't look bad, but it's just I'm yeah. not the audience. Sorry, just picking up with this. I thought the Rocky Mountains would be rockier. Absolutely, bud. Absolutely, yeah. And I didn't see one friggin' leprechaun. I tell you, it was a lag. I actually, a lag. I, was, I was only thinking um, while... Well, um, earlier today thinking about the looking at the leprechaun views um there's a leprechaun museum here and i should have told yeah, you that you should have taken us to that fuzzy yeah. spot on that's exactly what i expected exactly what i expected craggy island that's what i wanted <laughs> luke what did you think of the trailer for this movie yeah so, so uh, over the last few years something has happened where i'll just watch anything that has nicholas cage in absolutely like, that, that's the some, correct stance to have <laughs> something has just happened where you know he's always been there throughout my childhood and growing up and all these great movies but now i will actually watch a film because it has nicholas cage in um and this looked amazing if you ask me you know like i was i've I'm watching it on my phone and the kids were in the room so i was trying to concentrate yeah. with like headphones in yeah. i couldn't quite see what it was that they were fighting against. I don't yeah. know if that was intentional. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, didn't like, get a clear image, really. Yeah. Um, but it looks it looks great, you know. Um, and I'm I'm all in. Nick, Nicholas Cage, you know, there. I'm with you, Luke. I'm with you, Efren. Uh, when I seen the trailer, I was more interested in the actors where I'd seen them before. 
the kid in the middle played Will Robinson in the Lost in Space Netflix oh, series. Oh, is that who? I knew I recognized yeah. him, but I didn't. I had to look him up. I go, I've seen this kid before, you know. And the kid on the right reminds me of Daniel Radcliffe. Like he's Daniel. in. Um, he's the. Uh, I think it's Jaden Martell. He's in Ish. He's one of the okay. kids in Ish, and he's in okay. uh, Knives, uh, Knives Out as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean Nicolas Cage. I mean, what Luke said, I don't. You know, he's a good, such a good actor. He's been around for decades, so. This one caught my interest, so I may go check it out. You know, so I like to see how these creatures really look like, also. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too, mate. I think they're going to be good. Uh, James, what about you, bud? Well, Peter, we we did a, a little uh, review of American Werewolf in London a couple of weeks ago, and we sat, had said at the end of the show, "Is there any Nicolas Cage werewolf movies?" And yeah. I think this might be this might be werewolves. And they're I just, did just get werewolf because there's 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 the sort of hairy you can see in one shot. They're kind of hairy beasts yeah. so i think this might be a werewolf movie um i love the look of this i thought it was it right up my alley but obviously looks... watched our show james and exactly yeah and just wished idea. into existence despite the yeah. fact that this yeah this i remember no, Nick, it, was a, it was a big deal that nick cage me. was here yeah. filming a movie you know yeah. um but I, lo- I love the look of this right up my alley like you know even aside from the if it wasn't nick cage i'd still be excited i think yeah. it just looks like a really good solid horror film you know really tense um there's a movie from a few years ago called it comes at night yeah it was um Joel, um, fuck, what's his last name? From St- he's in Star Wars. His uncle Ben in Star Wars. Oh, I know. Um, Joel, yeah, uh, I uh, Luke, don't know. Joel Fuzzy will come with me in a second. Anyway, um, but it started him, and it was like I was really disappointed. It was the exact same premise. It was like these creatures that come out at night and they they go and like prep for it. And I think this might be the one that delivers on that premise. So, Joel Egerton, thank he's you. He's on the ball, like he's on Absolutely, the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I looks, do. Looks I great. do think you're right. I do think you're right, James, because in the trailer you see the the young boy talking to a girl, and I wouldn't be surprised if her and her family yeah. are werewolves, like, or if they're associated yeah. with the creatures. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this one. I, I mean, I, much like you said, look, I'll watch anything with Nicolas Cage and even some god awful mm. movies. Yeah. Pig. Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? I love Awful. Awesome. So fucking Will- bad. Thank so you, Highland G. Ha- thank Terrible. you. Highland G said he likes Willy's Wonderland, right? I think uh, Willy's Wonderland. It, I mean, it, it, it was amazingly cringe, but that's what we're oh, amazing. Yeah. Like yeah. Awful. Yeah. It's- yeah. Not in a um, fun way, though, and it's just a shit way. No, how do you mad? No. Um, off my shelves, Chris is just saying he was great as Robert the Bra- Yeah, I forgot he was in Braveheart. He was in. Oh, no. Was he in Braveheart? He's not in Braveheart. Nic- Nicholas talking- Cage? No, no, he's talking about Chris Pine. When, when did Chris Pine play Robert Bruce? Uh, the. I'm blank. I'm blank now. I'm blank now. I'm not sure. So, I'm mixed Chris up. Clarify I was about to say. what you're talking about. I'm confused with what. I can't remember him being Robert Bruce. Um, anyway, does Nick Cage age? No, he doesn't, mate. He's immortal. He's absolutely immortal. Uh, Chris is saying it's a Netflix film. Not seen that one, but I'll have to check that one out. Um, uh, he, he does fuzzy, but money offshoots in the effect of aging. He's on his fourth or fifth set of hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think you're probably right. And fuzzy can't unsee Daniel Radcliffe now. Thanks very much, um, <laughs> Efren. You've, you've, you've put that in it. Peter's had a may. Peter, I have. Yeah, I don't understand what I was talking about there for a second. Outlaw King. Okay, I'll have to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, first. I know that one. I don't, yeah, I've not seen that one. I've not seen that one. Okay, guys, we're coming to the end of the show. Efren, 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 I love you dearly. You know this. So just for you, we've got a new segment. (laughs) We're going to talk sport, Efren. Just for you. Okay, and thanks. <laughs> this is once off. We're only ever doing this the once. Yep, everybody's out. We're only doing this the once. And that's because I just can't get my head around the madness of of this. What I don't this man is seventy, isn't he? He's isn't... Uh, no, I think he's in his late fifties. Is he? Mike no, he must be he must be a bit older than that, I would think. No. Sixty no, odd. Sixty odds now? Probably this... I like the late fifties, I think. No. Late fifties. Right yeah. now. How old is Mike? Jake Tyson? Paul, he he's he's a YouTuber, isn't he? Is yeah. this the future of, of Hydro Collectibles? Is this 10 years' time, Luca? We're going to have you facing off against Tyson. Is <laughs> I this ain't what's... facing off against anyone. Yeah. <laughs> but Andy's seen, oh, we've got, a, we've got a sweepstake. Fuzzy saying 60. Chris Bell, 62. I just looked it up. I said it was 57. 57. 57? 57. I, I thought he was way older than that. Yeah, yeah. Mad. I suppose he, he was like only 20 when he was like. But a even, boxer. I mean, you you probably won't be able to tell by looking at us. But I'm not really a boxing type. Um, 
57. That, is that not a ridiculous age to still be getting hit in the head with big meaty hands and things? Let's face it, he ain't the one that's going to get hit, is he? Yeah. Well, well uh, that's the thing. Is, is the other guy a boxer or is he MMA like the previous kind of crossover? Boxer. They've done? No, I, boxer. Thought he was, I thought he was um, mixed martial arts. I thought... I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure he's a boxer. The two of them are boxers. Because, Logan because the last time they did a crossover, they had a they had a they had a famous MMA, MMA versus a famous boxer, but they had to play by boxing rules, which allowed the boxer to have the advantage. Well, I did read something saying that that um, Jake Paul was going to be in a head thing, whereas Mike Tyson wasn't, and Tyson Probably wise. was going to be, wise Tyson, was going to be <laughs> Tyson was going to be tested for drugs, and Paul wasn't, and things like that. It, it all felt very strange. I just, it just, just feels insane to me that an, an older man is going to, I mean, I know he's insane, isn't he, Mike Tyson? Did, didn't he bite people's ears off and things like that? He did. He, yeah, during a fight. Uh, he, Peter, it's question. not the worst, not the worst thing he's done, Peter. You should look yeah, at I was going to say, Peter, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's, some, there's some bad shit there, like, yeah. and it's sort of strange that he's still kind of accepted in, in culture, I feel, you know? Yeah. Jake Paul's um, 27 years old, so there's basically a 30 year difference. And Jake Paul's not a, he, just because he was famous before he started fighting, you know, on TikTok doing yeah. videos, you know. I don't know. I just I think don't Mike know. Tyson may go crazy on him, you know. So I see he's him. he's like an excellent boxer though. Like he's like winning left and right Ooh. against professionals. Uh, Jake Jake Paul. He's like legitimately a boxer now, like him and Logan. Who 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 has he fought? Anybody well known or just a like yeah, he's boxer. a professional boxer now. Like he's, he's, he's a professional boxer doesn't mean you're good though. But he's winning like his fights. That's what I just meant. That's what I just said. Who's he fighting? Is he fighting anybody north, nor you know, north anybody worthy to fight? You know. And I've seen Mike Tyson um, train videos, and he's pissed off. I don't know if he's gonna last. He's fifty-seven years old. How long he can last? I think about three rounds. Probably be tired after that. Um, But I just so is it? Is this something you guys are gonna watch? I watched the highlight reel. (laughs) Yeah, I wouldn't thing. pay for it, put it that yeah. way. You know, I'm so sure it'll be on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll have a bank account to see a small fighting. fortune, even yeah. if they only do one round. Yeah. The question so is, Efren, you are, is the are sport... you going to do it yourself? Fight Tyson? Well, yeah, Raise some money for it. charity, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Fight James. Yeah, yeah. yeah you and James would, in the ring. I wouldn't dream of it. I wouldn't no. dream of it. Well, well it'd be the same. It'd be the same thing. You'd have a twenty-something-year-old against the same a fifty-something-year-old. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> we'll have a cuddle contest instead. <laughs> um, right, guys, jumping into the chat. See what we've got here. We've got Doctor Van Hoot. Yes, but he's still Mike Tyson. Paul is good at YouTube, but he's no Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah. But, but I get that. I do get that. I get that he's an animal. But at that age, a couple of blows to the head. Yeah, I mean, you're talking dangerous stuff do you know what i mean it's, i don't know i just don't he get fought recently uh, about four years ago mike tyson uh he fought against another fighter and you could see their age you know yeah. they're both like over 50 i think i forgot who the other fighter was and uh yeah so. yeah money's money's at the root of it i think he looks sharp to me if there isn't a knockout clause i think paul is in serious trouble yeah. wow 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 and then lots of people confirming that he's a boxer if, if Tyson goes down, I'm calling with his tights on. Well, you think? You think? I, yeah. I, I go back to his age. He's only going to be good for about two or three rounds, you know, I, I think. And then after that, I'll just get tired, you know. Yeah. So. He can be in the greatest shape. The issue is his brain isn't. Tyson could get hurt falling out of bed. That That's my thing, Fuzzy, to be honest. Um, I, I, I don't think you're giving him enough credit. Have you seen videos of him lately? Like throwing punches he's a monster yeah. still yeah. there's a certain element of muscle memory as well once you've done things for that many years yeah yeah his body knows how to fight I, it's so. entirely possible they get in and he just destroys him in six seconds like i think that's that's if I anything i like really quick and try to end it quick yeah yeah, yeah. And I think this is probably a, a, a popular thought from well by late by lunchtime um, i think people don't like the the other guy do they people want tyson to floor the prick because yeah. I think he's not got a good reputation, you know. Um, the discussing our fight, James, now our charity boxing match. Uh, chuck, a, chuck an airwave in my mouth. What's an airwaves? It's a, a chewing gum. Chewing gum, chewing gum. Oh, it's um, yeah. horrendous. 
Um, okay, okay. There we go. A little bit of little bit of fighting. Last topic, guys. I just wanted to mention before we moved on. We've obviously had the announcement this week of the relaunched X titles. We've got three main titles: Uncanny X Men, X Men, and Exceptional X Men. But there's also going to be a whole host of other series coming out. There's going to be um, X Force, um, Wolverine, obviously, and a whole host of other stuff. But they've announced the new teams and team leaders. There's some interesting choices in, in those lineups. We've got Juggernaut as a hero again there now. We've got Kitty Pride or Kate Pride's team of all new mutants apart from White Queen. So she's going to be leading a kind of a new mutants kind of thing. Um, interesting. Interesting stuff. Can I say I'm excited? I, I don't know. I will read it just because it's a relaunch and I do like the X-Men concept. I don't like the execution over the last few years. But, 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 what I wanted to chat about is if you were relaunching the x-men and you had to pick a team of four x-men who are they and who's your leader of that foursome and um, so while she's are thinking about that i'll tell you mine and we'll tell you the chats so i picked these guys um my team leader is cannonball he's one of my favorite characters sam guther new mutants um kinetic powers really really like him i've gone for calvin who's mimic who you'll remember probably from the original X-Men kind of series, but then really came to, to light, or I enjoyed him most, when he um, when he joined the Exiles team, uh, and you got this kind of Colossus Wolverine version, which I really, really liked. We've got Magic, um, Ilgana Rasputin, but I prefer her in her original form from the New Mutants, the Dark Child form, where she's part demon, um, which I really, really like. And then I've gone for a, a little-known mutant, but Van Sastrovic, Captain Marvel from the Guardians, original Guardians of the Galaxy line. Uh, I really like his character. He's got telekinetic powers. He was part of the New Mutants run from back in the day as well. So that that would be my team of X Men, just to just to add a bit of spice to things. Stick your four favourites in the chat, ladies and gents. Anybody that's still watching, let me know which which X Men would be in or which mutants would be your team. I did ask Instagram, <laughs> Fuzzy, Caitlyn Jenner, Eddie Izzard, Lily Savage, and RuPaul. <laughs> <laughs> he said, calm down it's a joke um, he went for the yojins he's gone for for wolverine storm beast and gene which yeah i think i think that's a, a cool lineup phil triple g james t luke and simon is the team leader christ on a bike could you imagine Mutiny. could you Mutiny. imagine that overthrow yeah. the leader yeah, we'd overthrow him. He gets Com killed immediately. He'd get him killed straight away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Comic deal, Gambit, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler's always a, a popular character, mind. I really like Nightcrawler. Juggernaut, Juggernaut and Cyclops. I like Cyclops. I'm a fan of Cyclops. And um, then we've got Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Cyclop, and Sunfire. I like Sunfire. Are you guys familiar with Sunfire? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like Sunfire as well. He's a pretty cool character. Um, the chat are just saying... Um, let us just jump to the chat before we come to you guys. And since you're an X Men fan, I have worries about the plans Marvel recently announced. Yeah, great, John. I have to be honest, and I know I might be, I might be alone here because I know some people love it, but but I've lost faith with the Krakoa age of X Men titles. I think it's got overcomplicated, too convoluted, and we do need a restart. But um, I don't know. It's it, it's an interesting jumping on point. I will give it a go. I think I will give it a go. Um, we're still talking fighting. Uh, <laughs> I'd have Fuzzy, Chris Bell, Comic Deal, and Wei Sheen. Sean, um, A team. That's a that's a that's a pretty strong team. And hashtag cancelled. You're right, Fuzzy. Sorry, I'm just really scratching my nose, and I've got my Ghostbusters monster on my finger. <laughs> um, exceptional X Men sounds like they were running out of adjectives. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Nice to see you, Jack. Thank you for joining. And Fuzzy's discussing what uniform they're going to have in his X-Men team. Oh, yeah, that'll be good. So, 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 we'll come to um, Efren first. Efren, who's going to be in your team and why is it Beast? Um, when I first heard this announcement, I think I heard it yesterday too, and uh, I was like, wow, I couldn't wait. I mean, it brought, for some reason, I just said, ah, this is going to be cool. And this, this is why I collect comic books. I think, you know, bring me back to being a kid. I go, this looks so cool. I noticed in all these three um, series and some of the other ones, well, I don't know about the other ones, but Storm is not in there at all. And um, I know they killed off Jean Grey again. I was like, damn it, stop it with killing her off, you know? But my four, first one that I, that I see on there also would be uh, Ms. Marvel. Um, you know, she just recently okay. became a mutant. Yeah, I yeah. like her. Um, let me see who else. I like to see Rogue. I always like the Rogue character. And I like, um, I like Magic also. 
And uh, I think my fourth one would be uh, Nightcrawler. You know, oh, I've only had to pick four. He surprises. I thought Beast would come in there because I know you're a big fan. No, of, of I mean, I try to pick some uh, X-Men that, that I normally don't pick. Yeah. You know? so yeah. That's why I pick those four. Good stuff. James, how about you? Uh, I'll go Cyclops, the leader, Rogue, Iceman, Ooh, and Bobby. Colossus. I'll go Colossus. I like Colossus as well. I, though yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I like Colossus. Luke? Uh, yeah, so Cyclops, for me, there is no better leader than Cyclops. I've I've really enjoyed when Cyclops takes takes lead. You know, he's he's a soldier at the end of the day and a good one at that. Um, I am a fan of Beast, so Beast would definitely be on my list to follow up the the science route. Plus, you know, he's a beast, he's a monster. Mm -hmm. um, then I would have to go for Darwin, which is my personal yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, probably Storm or Rogue. Uh, it's kind of a toss up. I'll probably lean towards Storm. Yeah, yeah. Which storm outfit, but punk storm? The punk, yeah. I've Efren straight in made you right, punk storm. That's the right answer. But Luke, which one would you go for? I'd probably <laughs> go for the original, like the 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 animated cartoon style white. Yeah, the white. The that white. is the yes. correct. That that is the correct yeah. answer. White classic. Yeah. Yeah. White is classic. Yeah. Um, unbelievably shite X Men one is when I give up. <laughs> yeah, I think that one was published a good few times ago. Highland G, how about you? So I like the smaller X-Men stories and my favourite character is X-23 so she's going to be my leader. I would have, along with her, I would have Gabby in her Honey Badger outfit because um, I, I really like that. Yeah. Um, I'd also put Dakin in there because I think they worked well as a sort of trio in one of the X-23 books. And then I need a powerhouse so maybe someone like Psylocke. Yeah, yeah, very did, cool. Did you know there's an older version of X-23 in the Marvel Universe right now? Is that in the I know they've the done Wolverine's an old 3D short. Well, they thought they she had died. Um, <clears throat> uh, they thought X-23 died, and you know how they were bringing him back, so they brought her back, but she didn't die. She was just uh, stuck like in another universe, and then they brought her out of there, and she had aged, you know? So there's two X-23s. She goes by another name now, but she's older, you know? So it's like, a, like an old man Logan kind of setup thing. Going not, on. not that old, but just maybe yeah. about 20 years so, old. So how did they bring her back then? Well, they thought she died. Okay, so they brought her back in those eggs that they had in Krakoa. You know, they were they were able to bring back mutants, and they brought her back. Oh, so so they didn't clone her; they brought her back through their Krakoa method. Yes, yeah. but okay. she had not died. They thought she had died, uh, but she didn't. And now there's two X twenty threes running around. We're such I, nerds, aren't we? Okay, okay. So Gabby's I, technically a part of X twenty three as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Jack saying Nightcrawler, Iceman, Armor, um, Beast, or Storm. Very cool. I quite like the armor character. That, that's can, kind um, of... can an X Men fan explain something to me? Because I I gave up on the comics with the Krakoa stuff after House of X and Powers of X. Um, how did they reform Adamantium when they revived them from the egg things? Like, because I I kept noticing that Wolverine was still like with his claws and everything even after he died. How Luke, there's there's lots of things you don't delve too deeply into in the in the Krakoa. I do remember and someone in the chat will tell us I'm wrong because I cannot remember. But you're right, because I remember thinking how's it all these Wolverine clones knocking around with Adamantium? And I think they had a big pot of it or some shit. I, don't I, don't, think I can't they ever, remember. I don't unless I, I I read them, you know, I'm still reading X-Men. I don't think they explained it or if they did I just skip mm -hmm. right but through they would, it. They would have to bathe his whole body in it again because it's yeah, his yeah. entire skeleton. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So you'd have to go through that pain every time. Yeah. I will say I really enjoyed those early comics of the series. I absolutely loved, and it just got too much afterwards, so I gave yeah. up. Oh, that because like X twenty three is fine; it's just, it's just her claws, so they would just have to coat yeah. her claws and put them back in again, and she's all good. But Wolverine, they would have to completely coat him in it. On another side note, they killed off Captain America in an X Men book, and they brought him back in Krakoa through one of those eggs. So technically, if you know Ms. Marvel's a mutant, wouldn't he be a mutant now too? Yeah. Oh, Efren. Yeah, it's 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 too complicated. Honestly, this is the problem, but isn't it? X Men gets so convoluted and complicated. Yeah, I'm just saying they brought Captain America yeah. back. So. And I mean, in in one of the latest Wolverine issues, I don't know if you've read it, but basically he's strung up by Sabretooth, and he uses I can't remember if he uses his hands or what, but he basically cuts his hand off. So he cuts through that. I mean, even pulls his hand off or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't... You say adamantium again. Adamantium. 
So, so I presume they've got a soldering iron and they just weld it back together or something. Why, James? Are you? Are you, you said you said it like you said it twice now. And I mean, you, I don't you said that, you I said, mean no, but you, the way you said if you we, we have it's recorded, Peter. If you go back, you said adamantium. You said like adamantium. You said like that it was very James, cute. James, has anyone ever told you you're a bully? You're a bully. I you're said it was very cute, cute Peter. <laughs> <laughs> it was adorable. <laughs> Right, guys, that, that, uh, and on that bombshell, we'll end the show. Um, this has been a really interesting chat, guys. Lots of stuff going on over on my channel. I've got my, my Dublin Comic Con trip video out there. I've got, I can view this all day on Spider Man. Um, that, that was an interesting one. I enjoyed doing that one with you, James. That was it's good, good fun. fun. Um, and I've got an unboxing video out. Um, <laughs> Andy thinks we should be getting married. Um, the Irishman takes <laughs> us. <laughs> um, now, we've got a lot going on this week, guys, so I just want to quickly mention a few shows. Um, Monday night, myself, James, and Efren are doing our top three, one worst, and we're looking at DC villains that aren't Batman villains. So these are any other villain in the DCU. There's been some real interesting picks so far. Um, so, yeah, that that's going to be that's, a uh, one. That's Dexter, right? The cat? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so three each of which will be picking three of our favourite villains and one of our our worst villains. So that'll be fun. Um, Wednesday night, myself, James, and Andy are going to be doing our charity wind up wind up night. So that's where we're going to be telling you um, how much we've raised. I'll show you the donation so you can see clearly that we've donated it. And we're also going to be doing a bit of a chat about the Comic Con um, and the trip to Ireland we had last weekend. So we'll be talking a little bit about that and sharing some of the photos. So that'll be fun. And then on Thursday night, we're doing Killer Comic Show. So as ever, we've got a whole host of different um, different sections on that. New one, which is really fun, is we're talking crap comic covers as well. So that's been great, great fun. So yeah, enjoy that on a Thursday James, tell me a little bit about this. Yeah, New Style Be Right Back was on Leprechaun uh, from to celebrate St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. So that's up on the channel now. Uh, the most heated I think we've ever gotten in a conversation, Peter. Um, yeah. We strongly disagreed about the quality of this movie. But it's it's dog shit. Really... This is a shit movie. Uh, Save uh, it for the video. Send it the one. It, they can click, they can click on One Good Scare at One Good Scare Show. It's there. offensively bad. Because you guys just said it was shit. I'm, I'm, like, I'm angry, angry Efren. Well, the videos, the videos, the videos, not shit, Efren. The oh. uh, put a lot of time and effort into it. The movie is, I think, pretty good. I think decent. It's all right. I mean, it's bad, <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun. You know? <laughs> I loved you. T- I loved how you kind of dropped down. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say so- when something comes out of your mouth and you realize, yeah, no, I should probably double back on that. Um, <laughs> it was, it was a really, really fun conversation. I, I'm, I'm very proud of the edit on this one. I think uh, there's some good gags. I in think there, that's you know, probably so my favorite video we've done. I have to say, yeah, it's a yeah. really good one. So really check good. it out. It's fun. It's very full of stereotypes, and aff- if you're Irish, you might be a little bit offended. But um, yeah, check it out. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, and what's happening on other people's channels? Highland G, what's happening over on your channel? Uh, so I'm currently working on a video similar to, I just put out a video recently of like my top five manga I've, I've read recently. So I'm working on a similar video to do with the Cinebook comics that I've been reading. So hopefully oh, yeah. I'll get that out in the next next sort of week or so. Um, and then, yeah, just generally trying to have a video once every sort of couple of weeks at least and get back into the sort of rhythm of things. Yeah, good. Good stuff, good stuff. Luke, what's happening over on Hydra Collectibles? Absolutely nothing at the moment. I haven't made a video this week. Um, I've got loads of videos recorded. I just haven't had time to sit down and actually actually edit anything. Um, So I don't know, but watch this space. There will be something. Good stuff, good stuff. And Efren, what's happening? Efren, can I just say, as much as I love you, and I do love you dearly, I really, really enjoyed seeing your daughter do your, um, your, your, your... the selection short thing that you did recently. Oh yeah, yeah. I did yeah, a quick short with really her. Really cool. I've been doing yeah. shorts on how to clean comic books, and she came on yeah. really quick yeah. with me. And I always love having my daughter do videos with me. You know, yeah. so um, I just finished uh, the giveaway was about two, three days ago, and somebody on this uh, panel won. I uh, wouldn't send it to them, Efren. I don't think they deserve it. They're too angry. So. I never win anything. I'm so happy. It's, yeah. <laughs> Delighted. Peace from Malcolm is my favorite artist as well, so yeah, like it's a, it's a cool know, book. I'm particularly and, uh, happy about that. Was that given one. to it to me by uh, Danando Knight, and um, in two weeks I'm going to be at WonderCon, Sister Con to Comic Con in Anaheim. Hopefully I'll be live on Peter's show Saturday for a couple of minutes showing you around. Um, just doing my normal shorts, and um, I found this really cool uh, YouTube channel that uh, it, 
uh, that I'm going to talk about really quick on my uh, channel, just saying to go check it out. I thought of it was entertaining. Besides all of, all of the YouTube YouTubers right now, you know, somebody else, you know. So Good um, besides that, you know, whenever I feel like making videos, uh, Peter and I are still going to be doing um, our advanced orders and um, also five questions that I, me and Peter ask each other. I'm probably hoping to do another one um, this month. Yeah, nice that I'll be on Peter's channel, and anybody wants me on their channel, I, you know, I'm available. So, yeah. I've sent you um, my picks for the, the okay. comics. I'll right check now. them out. Yeah. I'll get them ready. Good stuff. Um, James, sorry, anything else you want to mention about One Good Scare or, or anything else? Yeah, we got a spoiler review for Imaginary up on the channel as well. So, um, if anyone has seen that in the last couple of days, um, God bless, and that's up there. So, check that one out. We're also going to have next week. Is it next week? Um, the week week after next, anyway, there's going to be a Ghostbusters review standalone and a Immaculate review standalone as well. And we have One Good Scare live on Friday, but it's going to be live. Yeah, it's not actually going to be live, but our oh. One Good Scare, okay. the show is going to be on Friday at nine. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about there's been big scream news, been a lot of kind of little tidbits over the last couple of weeks. So talk about yeah. that. Werewolf, you've already given ten dollars tonight, man. <laughs> That's um, thank you so much, mate. You didn't have to do that. That was really, really appreciated. Thank you so much, bud. Thank you so much. Um, okay, guys, always a pleasure as ever spending time with you guys. And um, even when you are picking on us, James. But apart from that, it's been it's been fun. It's been fun. And with that, we'll call it a night. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.